How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I'm Bob. Hi. I'm here with Jackson. Hi, Bob. I'm Jackson. A.K.A. Scootish. Scootish. Yeah, Scootish. Scootish. Uh, if you've been to these streams, you know Jackson. I shouldn't have to explain <laughs> myself, but if you're a podcast listener, Jackson's a streamer here on Twitch. Uh, we play games together sometimes. We're also good friends, right, it. Jackson? You, you said that while gritting your teeth, and now I'm scared no. about the validity of our friendship. I'm not at all. That's not what I'm doing. No. <laughs> you can't prove it. All right. All anyway. Right. Whatever, Bob. Uh, thanks for being here. No, thank you for having me. I'm really honored to be here, and I'm excited. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, I think the main topic is something about Microsoft and Nintendo being all buddy buddy all of a sudden. There's a lot of rumors and speculation going on. There's a lot of nods hinting at Nintendo and Microsoft being in bed with something going on later this year. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's not that new though. I feel like I've been hearing about Xbox and Nintendo working on something really cool for a while now. It's been, uh, it seems like an obvious thing especially with Microsoft just kind of playing with everybody for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and it seems like the perfect fit on the Switch. Now it does for sure. I remember, like, I, I, I remember a time when I was a kid. I was always a Nintendo kid growing up. But then uh, I got bullied on the playground <laughs> by the console war kids because I didn't have an Xbox or a PlayStation and I needed to make a choice. And I, I went with the numbers and more kids had Xboxes so more kids would protect me. That's the bro move. The Xbox was the bro move. I I went full bro move. <laughs> I was I was a bro. Xbox 360 to me was like edgy, like that was the cool thing, and I I would never see like Nintendo and Xbox working together. Now it's weird cuz we're looking at Xbox and saying the phrase, that's so obvious that they're working <laughs> together finally. See me me and Will fully embraced our our uh uh what do you call it? Uh, I wouldn't call it fanboyism because we were Sega kids, but uh, yeah, during the PlayStation Xbox era, we went hard into GameCube, <laughs> and we were totally fine with our with our GameCube life with our little purple purse. I mean, I never left Nintendo. Don't get me wrong. I, I was always I always got the Nintendo console before I got like the Xbox One or the uh, 360. I always made sure I had the Nintendo, and I always made sure I got the Nintendo games. I didn't really care about the Xbox games because there weren't any games for Xbox and there still <laughs> aren't really. Uh, That's uh... But I just remember Xbox was known for like Gears of War, Halo, and Fable. Like those were their three games. Mm -hmm. And they all revolve around like brutally murdering <laughs> your friends. It was, it was Whereas, the adult choice. Yeah. Like to me, to me it always made sense that uh, Sony... And Nintendo would make would would play together, and I'm surprised it's not them, because like Sony had Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, all characters that I feel like would interact very well with Mario, Link, or Kirby. Well, PlayStation's trying to run the spectrum. That's why PlayStation's trying to do Microsoft, a lot of things. Microsoft's right got their own niche carved out. They're like, we're, we're this, and this is it. We're not trying to be Nintendo at all. Yeah, uh, Xbox. So the two Xbox has a lot has to work to, to gain. The two have a lot to gain from each other if, if they do partner. A hundred percent, I agree with you. I, I, I before we get too far me. into this, oh I, yes, yes, we, yes, I have some things to address. Okay, that's the main topic of the show. But I wanted to talk about this. How uh, word up, mother effing tomorrow? There's going to be an indie world showcase. So of course we can't talk Whoa! about the indie world showcase right now because it's happening tomorrow at the time that we're recording this. So. Sucks to suck, but again, Nintendo is purposely, uh, you know, scheduling their announcements the day after the Wolf Den podcast so that we can't talk How about How dare it. they? I know. It's messed up. How rude. Like, honestly. Uh, I suspect uh, it's probably not going to be nothing too exciting on this. The 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 last Indie Worlds, I don't think was that exciting. Or was it the one before that? There was two that happened within the past year that just flat out sucked. I don't remember. I, I mean, I think most indie worlds inevitably kind of suck. 
<laughs> I like indie from games. The fact I like if you like indie, indie games, games, that's cool. And I see some cool games there, but I'm never walking away where I'm like, "Oh, mom, can I borrow your credit card?" Right. I'm, I'm never. I'm never that excited. I'm like, "Oh, cool. Okay. I'll. Well, nothing's coming out. I. I. Sure. I'll. I'll buy." Cuphead and the Frozen Throne or whatever. <laughs> That's the one. And yeah. Some some of my favorite games are indie games, but I've never walked away from an indie world presentation and been like, "Wow, this was amazing!" Like I feel like Nintendo just kind of throws throws it together and is just like, it, "It's it's okay." Right. Where I feel like a direct or even a mini direct or even a partner direct is more of a show, more of like a guys take a moment and well, look at these well these are these are b-sides these are these are nintendo switch b-sides because if even if they're even though they're indie games if they were good enough they would be in regular directs yeah controversial opinion <laughs> no I, I i agree i i think there's probably this, some I, stuff I, in here that would also be in a direct but for the most yeah. part uh these are b-sides i remember at least in nintendo's eyes that was really cool was um the one where they announced cuphead and cadence of hyrule right that was really cool yes that now, was there, really cool i like indie worlds there are there have been some great indie worlds um i have yeah, little I, faith I in think... nintendo right now because the last couple of announcements have not been great so so my expectations are very low for this whoa 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 hold on in the last direct we got used car salesman wario and you're telling me <laughs> That the last Nintendo Direct wasn't amazing. You're also a big Zelda fan. What? You're also a big Zelda fan. No, I'm not. You're not? No, that's E. Oh, never I mind. like I like Zelda, but I have never played Skyward Sword in my life. I've never played Majora's. Oh, Mask. I got it confused with Kingdom Hearts. That's what it was. <laughs> oh, dude, Kingdom Hearts. Oh, easily, easily. Can we talk about putting Kingdom Hearts confused. on the Switch? It makes sense. No. So this says Nintendo has <laughs> dropped the last indie bombshell in the form of an indie world showcase announcement. Yes, a new presentation will air tomorrow, the 14th of April. The show is set to start at wow, there's a lot of times here. Noon Eastern. Yes. <laughs> I will not I will probably not stream that. I don't think it's gonna be that crazy. And will feature roughly 20 minutes, it will be roughly 20 minutes long, focused on fresh and new indie games coming to the Nintendo Switch. Check out the Twitter announcement below. And then it's just all the stuff that I just said. Bob, you should stream it tomorrow. I'm feeling I'm feeling something crazy tomorrow. Absolutely not. I'm not doing it. Bob, I'm feeling something crazy. I gotta, I gotta film a video tomorrow. Film it after you stream it. I will stream tomorrow night. Have like your almost chat twelve hours later cheerleaders. <laughs> but think if you stream at twelve PM Eastern Standard Time, you don't have to stream at the night. If I stream at twelve PM Eastern, then I will be awake. <laughs> <laughs> for the day at a, at a reasonable hour bob's outing himself that he just doesn't sleep that should be my no i sleep i just i just procrastinate sleep this is the problem <laughs> oh you're like a little nocturnal bat i am you're like is that why uh will loves batman so much because batman's his brother no will is a will is a normal human Right, right. I'm saying you're Batman. Oh, okay. And that's why he loves Batman so much, because Batman's his brother. Right. No, I understand. Yeah, it, it was understand. a joke, but I, laugh. It was a good joke. It was a great joke. Well, you didn't laugh, so I don't know if it was a good joke anymore. <laughs> anyway, hey, remember about how uh, Nintendo and Microsoft are all buddy-buddy? Oh, my God. We. I feel like I have never talked to you about this. We it's were, crazy. like, just talking about it. It's crazy. But first, <laughs> let's thank some subscribers. Wow. Oh, we got WD Mystic scribbles. with six months. Six months here. One year and three months on YouTube. Kissy face. I uh, love you, too. Smooch on the mouth if you're of age. Danty Mira with 20 months. 20 months. Hello, Bob. Hello, 20 Scoot. 20 months? 20 Yo, months. that's awesome. Uh, Lewis. With a subscription, thank you. We got Lazy Crazy High with a Prime, thank you very much. We got Danty Mirror with 25 bits. We got Fun oh, Dud awesome. with a bunch of gifted subs to Petrinko, L, Jeff, Frequency, Damon, Shield, Feed, and Jack Angel. Thank you very much. You, you realize Dud. it was a tier one sub to El Jefe 70. That means the boss. That's Spanish, Bob. I don't speak. Uh, that. 
Okay, that's so fair. I don't understand it. Ah, I understand. Ethel seventy two. Thank you for the twenty months. So many months. Wow. wow. Uh, if you're a new sub here, if you were just gifted a sub, go to discord.gg slash wolfden. You can get into the supporter Discord if you link your accounts. And I post videos there early sometimes. So you it's can get cool this week's Discord. early. I'm, you, I'm in the Discord. You can at Scoot can talk to and me. annoy him. Yeah. You, you can, can at me. Friend. You can at me, but only in the supporter Discord. And I will Wait, choose really? whether or not I want to answer you. Yes. Is that a thing? That is a thing. That is so cool. I don't know how to do that. What do you mean? You just get in the supporter Discord and, and at. No, no. I, I don't know how to set that up on Discord. So anyone can at me right now. Uh, on any dis on my Discord, I don't know how to set that up. That's you cool that you that's have it not set up, set up like for you. No, I just I just have uh, the notifications set to only at mentions mm. for that one channel. Oh, okay, okay. I have it off for the general channel because general. Is, All right, you know, that's the riff raff. I understand. It's 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 general. It's 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 the peasants who aren't buying subs. <laughs> a, I didn't say it. How dare they? I didn't say it. <laughs> How do dare you enjoy the free content for free? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Something like like a supporter chat or, or subscribers. You know how some, some Twitch streams will filter subscribers yeah. in the chat? That mm -hmm. instantly, like, filters out trolls immediately. Oh, 100% it does, yeah. So uh, you can knock me all you want for not wanting the riffraff to at me, but... That's why. No, I'm not. I'm not knocking you for it. I know you're I not. You. It's the other people that are going to leave YouTube comments after this and go, "Wow, I can't believe Bob's such a sellout." I gotta go to getroman.com/slash/wolfdead. <laughs> what? Nothing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> Microsoft and Nintendo are sleeping together. They're having swex. Um, Whoa. This is by Whoa. comicbook.com. This is the best oh, article I, love I can them. find somehow. I love them and their mispronunciations and misspellings. We'll find I that out them. right now. How many of those they have. And we'll see if I can even read the article. Because if that happens, <laughs> I might have a stroke. <laughs> A new rumor suggests that Nintendo and Xbox will have, make an announcement later this year. The rumor was sh was shared by Nick sh Special Ed. Oh, that's messed up. Uh, Baker on Twitter. That's his like handle. The co-founder. Oh, that's messed up. That's not the okay. co-founder of Xbox Era. Oh, I didn't know that. XboxEra.com. This, this makes sense, actually. The post pointed to an April 9th game mess video. <laughs> <laughs> from Jeff Grubb. Great name so far. <laughs> In the video, Grubb discusses a Phil Spencer photo with the many interesting items on the shelf in the background, including a Nintendo Switch. That image can be seen at Reset Era right here. I don't know why they don't just put that freaking picture in the article. Here it is. Um, and we remember this because uh, there's the... Uh, lumens guy the yeah. kojima productions logo guy uh on the shelf and uh what is it uh death stranding came to xbox and they were like obviously it was it was hinted at from this picture yeah i never understood uh what this little guy was i is he in death stranding i don't remember that He's, game to be honest with you i don't believe he is i didn't beat the game i don't believe he is okay I believe he is literally just the logo for... Uh, oh, he's the Kojima guy. Yeah, okay. he's the Kojima Productions logo. He's like their mascot. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, also designed by Yoji Shinkawa, the guy who designs all the uh, Kojima yeah. stuff. Um, anyway. Uh, in the video, Grubb states that everything on Phil's shelf meant something incoming. Readers should take that with a grain of salt, as with every rumor ever. But it will be in interesting to see if the two companies are indeed planning something. The tweet from Baker can be found embedded below. Uh, I feel like I need all of the context here. I, I don't know how much more context there really is it, it like really i i feel like i've been seeing these rumors since um 
the E since before the E3 where we met each other in 2019, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I and you know that's when Banjo came out for Switch, uh, Xbox and uh, Switch can play Minecraft together, and that was a big deal too. That was when we found it. That was when I I was I found you on Tinder. <laughs> that was a little joke. Yes. Yes, Bob. Yes. You get it? That's you get what, the joke? That's what... That's, I get the joke, Bob. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> I tried to live that moment down. It was a dark day. Why? Because I was... It's so embarrassing that I, like, met these cool people and I take a picture just with Flash oh, blinding everyone. Not, okay. Well, now we have to tell that story. You just Who opened you it to the bag about? here. I was, I was, I was just making a goof about how we met. Are you not, right, but like you were making that joke, no one would get the joke. Like, no, you said we met at that E3, so I was like, oh, that's when we found each other on Tinder. Ha ha, end of the joke. And now oh, you're bringing up some bullshit about how we were oh, hanging out with like Kevin Kenson. No, let's just leave it at that. And let's who else? Leave it at that. Let's leave it I think at that. Just literally just him. And then you took a selfie with him without telling him that you were going to take a selfie. You just walked up and took a picture I didn't of selfie to with him. him. Yes, you did. It, dude, yes, it you just did. Me. It was just of me. I have no idea who. Well, it looked Kevin like Kenson you just is. walked over. Luckily, he was very drunk, so he definitely doesn't remember that. Poggers. Anyway, Special Ed says the cat seems to be out of the bag on Nintendo and Xbox. You'll hear more in the fall. Uh, seems like he knows something's up. Xbox Theory tweeted, "What do you mean by cat out of the bag? Something good or bad? A deal going well or, or going well or it fell apart?" Question mark. Uh, and then some other guy says, Jeff said, quote, everything on Phil's shelf meant something incoming to which Ed said, which means, welp, the truth is out. The Nintendo Switch on the shelf meant something and it's going to be revealed in the fall. And then I love Sh Sh special Ed quote tweeted that and said, arguably the only person I've seen so far get it and understand the connection here and how this came, this all came about. I love how in the replies to the original tweet tom jerry games replies to uh the thing about the shelf just with gta on switch i'm like why does that mean gta on switch people are really they just they, they want to manifest whatever the they 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 are hoping for you know i love it so much it makes me giggle uh, uh yes continue sorry yeah but uh, as i was saying like i feel like we i've seen these rumors about Microsoft and uh, Nintendo getting along with each other for a really long time. Ori came to Switch. That makes a lot of sense. Super Lucky Tail came to Switch. That makes a lot of sense. We got Steve and Banjo and Smash. I keep seeing rumors about Halo and Game Pass on Switch. Uh, you're just reading the article now. <laughs> no, but like these these are like That's all literally the that, next like... paragraph of the article. <laughs> Right, it 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 is because like we keep hearing about Nintendo and Microsoft working together, and it's like supposed to be this big surprise that they like working with each other. We've seen that they like working each well, other. Well, it's because we keep getting confirmation that they do. It's a big deal, and we're a little jaded now, uh, because of what, like like it, it's always been the case where the big three companies are at mm -hmm. are at odds with each other. They don't they they're always trying to to best each other. And that's been yeah. the case through all of gaming history. Uh, but pretty recently, uh, what was it? When Fortnite came to Switch, that was around the time when uh, uh, cross-play started to be really mainstream. And people mm -hmm. started to expect cross-play between consoles to be on every game. And that was a weird thing. We always wanted cross-play. It always sounded great. And it yeah. is great. But all of a sudden, once Fortnite came to Switch, everyone was like, all right, now everybody has to have this. There's no reason not to have this. And everybody just expected it to be on every game. So it makes a lot of sense now that all of these companies are starting to get a little buddy-buddy. It makes a lot of sense for Nintendo and Microsoft to get together because they have a lot to gain from each other. Um, Nintendo's making great hardware right now. Xbox is also making great hardware, but they're having a hard time selling it for some reason. Um, yeah. Microsoft is getting the games going. They don't have any like you know uh, f phenomenal exclusives as of right now, but they they are in a position where they could get some really great exclusives. Um, but maybe they won't keep them exclusive. Maybe they'll shovel some off to Nintendo, or 
give Nintendo away to get some more power on their tiny little console. Mm. Which is what everybody's yeah. thinking, that there's going to be some sort of Game Pass situation on the Switch, which would be incredible. That'd be insane. But, you know, what I want to see more is I want to see a little bit more of Nintendo giving to Microsoft. Because in my opinion, we've seen a lot of Nintendo taking from Microsoft. And Nintendo hasn't right. really offered anything to them, at least. Like, Nintendo has gotten Cuphead, or like I said, Ori. I listed everything off. I don't. I can't think of anything that Nintendo was given to Xbox, really. Yeah. So that's one. That that's that's Nintendo has almost never given anybody their IP. Yeah. Um, they gave Philips part of their IP with the CDI for some reason. Um, so that's. The, I I can't imagine. Nintendo wanting to play nice in that way like they're they're very uh uh they take a lot of ownership over their own IP I could see Microsoft wanting to get in on the switch and giving them mm -hmm. some 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 tools um I can't imagine a world where Nintendo volleys the ball back I can't imagine what Nintendo would have to give to Microsoft yeah I'm. Uh, I have no idea. It's, I don't. I, I, don't I, like I don't see Nintendo buying the Xbox brand or the other way around. I don't see Microsoft buying Nintendo. No, so I don't. Crazy. I don't see how we're gonna see Nintendo give anything to Microsoft in return. To be completely honest, I mean, maybe that's okay with Xbox though, because you know, I'm. I'm kind of just thinking in my head. If if like Game Pass came to Switch, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, like. You know, you have access to all these games on the Switch, and like little Jimmy, who doesn't have an Xbox but has a Switch, loves the loves the Game Pass idea, wants to get an Xbox now because of Game Pass on the Switch. You know, it could kind of influence so, sales that way. So it, that's the like, thing. The, the benefit to Microsoft is that th they have the privilege of being on the Switch. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> that's huge. I, yeah. I also think that should be enough. Cool. Yeah. It, uh, I think also what would be cool for Switch is if, like, you know how your phone can stream Xbox Series X games yep. now? Yeah, if, you're, it does if a your pretty Switch good job. could do that, that'd be awesome. Well, that's the thing. So, okay, so are you talking about uh, Game Pass or are you talking about uh, uh, remote play? I'm talking about remote play. I see Game Pass for sure. I think that makes the most sense. Remote I, cloud I gaming. Both. Yeah. Being able to stream from the Xbox, you would need, like a like, a, you know, the remote play app or something and and that implies that you th that's kind of nintendo saying it's okay if you buy an xbox <laughs> whereas with game that pass is, it's yeah. just nintendo going you can buy a game pass subscription and we'll let you play it on your switch that would sell a lot of hardware for nintendo and it would mm, sell yeah, a, right. a, an insane amount of subscriptions for microsoft My which is all though. microsoft wants <laughs> microsoft just wants to sell subscriptions my fear, though, is, like, what games could possibly be playable on the Switch from Game Pass? Or uh, will they all be cloud-based versions of those games? That's like what Control it, is. They would all be cloud-based. Yeah. In, in my okay. brain, at least. Uh, and I, right, we I see a lot see... of cloud-based stuff on the Switch right now, like Control. Um, yeah. Specifically, there's a lot more cloud-based stuff in Japan because they have a better internet infrastructure. Um, also, Microsoft... Really? They they do. Uh, America has a pretty bad internet infrastructure, as considering we're such a like rich company, a uh, rich country. Anyway, uh, are you okay? Did something happen? I like. Are you going okay, deaf? It's laughter. It's laughter. It's laughter. I thought it was <laughs> yelling and screaming and crying. I got scared. <laughs> so, um. Microsoft is actually not they haven't been doing great in Japan. Japan yeah, doesn't really I mean, like Microsoft. Or or yeah, Xbox, I mean, it, the Xbox. They never brand. have. Yeah. So I think maybe uh Oh, you think this is a ploy to get the Japanese market kinda, yeah? Yeah, I think that uh That's genius. Especially for uh Nintendo for Nintendo it's a way to get a lot more Western stuff. They could they could like take that away from sony right now if you want to play mm. like the big triple a western stuff you're going to buy it on a playstation 
But oh, absolutely. But if you're if Nintendo gets a deal with Microsoft, instead of buying an Xbox for the big AAA Western stuff or buying a PlayStation, you could just do it on your Nintendo Switch, and that would be a big deal for Japan. My fear with that, though, is uh, let let's say they do that. Mm-hmm. Does the Nintendo Switch version of said game come out on Switch? And are you playing the Xbox Cloud version of Game Pass? You know what I'm you're, saying? Like, you're playing it on Game Pass through the cloud like you would on your okay. phone. All right. Okay. At least I in my brain. This again, this is all speculative. A lot a lot of those games, you know, they they are they do like I I I see that, but like it does I do have a fear of it. Cause uh like that game like uh Immortals Phoenix Rising, mm-hmm. like that came out on all the consoles. Mm-hmm. If what would that look like? Like, what what is Game Pass offering us? Are they offering us the Xbox version on the cloud playable on Switch? Or are they offering us the Nintendo Switch version of the game just on Game Pass? Like, it, it's, it's something no, that I kind of want to, like... Is, uh, it, in my brain... So right now, everything on Game Pass Cloud is the yeah. Xbox version of the game playing right. on a cloud somewhere. Right. My My, my fear of that just as like a switch owner would be like will those will like immortals phoenix rising not really like will they not worry about porting it because they're like ah they'll get the xbox version from game pass whatever and i have a problem with that because like you don't really own the games on game pass like those go away right and you can lose your favorite game like that so that's an interesting point that they would need to work out i can't imagine nintendo being okay with you getting the Xbox version of Immortals Phoenix Rising mm-hmm. instead of the Switch version. So if there's if that game is available on the Switch, I don't think it would be available on the cloud gaming like like library on the Switch. Yeah. Like they yeah, would probably just take it off cuz right now on Game Pass with cloud gaming there's there's little notes. It says uh, games available, cloud gaming, Android, and Xbox. Mm-hmm. Some games are just available on Android. Some games are available on PC through cloud streaming. So yeah. there would just be an extra one in my brain that says Switch, and some games just won't be available on Switch. In that, ca- it, if that's the case, okay. Then I then I understand that. I uh, I would be interested to see it. I definitely want, would would. I have no aversion to put putting Game Pass on Switch. Please let me use my Game Pass more. I love it. I l- I've been gaming on my little uh, wireless speaker of the Xbox Series S for a while now. It's a nice little console, and I have no problem playing, having more ways to play the games that they offer. What's what's wrong with your Series S? Nothing. I I I just I I love it. But like, if I could like play it on in in my bed, on my mm-hmm. Switch, that'd be awesome. That is that'd true. Be cool. I busted out the the uh, Series S recently. No uh, way, Like Why? a week ago to play Warzone I'm in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it was pretty cool. I can't believe you play Warzone on a console still. Why? Well, I, you know what? I need more space on my friggin' PC. It, uh, yeah, but like- I have like you... six hard drives in this PC already. I don't want to add another one. <laughs> no, I know. You just love Warzone so much and like, the optimal way to play Warzone is PC. Although there is uh, new MacBooks is a rumor, new MacBooks supposedly coming out. E yeah. actually texted me today. They're they're doing an announcement at the end of the month, and everybody yeah. suspects it's gonna. Or actually, next week. Is it next week? I think it's, yes, the twenty first. No, I think it's the end of the month. It's the twenty first. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody suspects that that they're gonna announce new MacBooks. So if they announce new MacBooks. This computer right here is just going to be a PC. I've had enough with the Hackintosh. <laughs> um, I love it. So then I'll I'll erase one of my hard drives and I'll have it dedicated to to games. And I will Oh, put, look at you, Bob. I will put Warzone on it and I will see what happens. You I'm trying to find absolutely no enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm not excited about it. Um one more, one last thing about uh, the Microsoft and Nintendo having SWEX. Um, 
Microsoft, no, Halo, the official Halo Instagram, put this weird fan art up. Uh, was this today? This what? was yesterday. It's it's very bizarre. It's is it's that uh, the Arbiter. Is that Bowser is the Arbiter? I don't know anything about Halo. Really? I Mario is is Master Chief. We got a Koopa hey. as one of those little guys as a grunt. Yeah. We got uh DK as, as something, and a we brute. got uh uh Bowser as apparently the Arbiter. You see. I'm I'm gonna what what's what's the little inscription? I can't read it. It's yeah, it's on Instagram, so it's very tiny. What in the background? Mario Chief Peach oh. Tana. <laughs> oh no, oh. I, I was talking about the, the caption. Wait, 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 there's more. Grupa Troopa. Grupa Troopa, Broody Kong, and R Bowser. Oh, there's Peach! Peach is in his left is in Bowser's left hand. Oh, Peach is Peach is Cortana. Yes. Uh, okay. Anyway, it says the adventures of Mario Chief and Peach Tana, huh? That's what the Halo Instagram account said. I okay, so I kind of to me, what that's shouting is Halo Master Chief Collection is going to come to Switch. There's in some no, form. There's nothing else like that on it the is, Halo that is Instagram the weirdest account. Thing I've ever seen in my life. There's but some that fan is art. so par for the course for Nintendo. It's a wavy Pringles Halo Halo edition. Oh, that I, I guarantee you they uploaded that when they thought Halo Infinite was gonna be the launch <laughs> title. <laughs> this is very strange. Can we, can we talk about Halo Infinite real quick and how their big April Fool's joke was, oh guys, oh no, the game won't be ready until 2022. <laughs> and like they thought that would be funny, but everyone was like, guys, Wait, did they actually is, do like, that? They actually did that, and then they were like, ha we got you. I'm like, you, you can't goof on us if you make the goof too real. Yeah, if no, that seems... The only thing we've seen of the game is so bad, you can't goof on us like the ga and tell us, guys, the game's still stinky, smelly. We need to make it sure that it's clean and good because we believed you. Yeah, that was too legit. That was too obvious that, 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 that something like that would happen. Did I? No, I... Yeah, no, that's right. I retweeted it. I, when that I, happened. I truly hope that like everyone seeing that's true at whoever made that like crushed the morale of that team and just <laughs> was like, oh yeah, we have a lot to like apologize for. It, it might actually get delayed now and then everybody's gonna look back at that tweet. I I think it should get delayed because listen, I love Halo, it's one of my favorite games of all time. I can't oh, believe you've never played it. I think this is what happened. Uh Kotaku tweeted it. And it was from a fake a Halo account. Is that what happened? Because I, oh, I, thought, I retweeted okay. Kotaku because it's fucking Kotaku. They should know what they're talking okay. about. Um, all right. So yeah, we all got duped by a. We, by all, a, we all got duped, but it's believable. According then to that's a good Shadow, anyway. joke. Actually, I thought I was told by someone that Halo themselves made that tweet because I had thought I saw it from like the Halo Twitter account. Right. Um yeah. What, what? But yeah, that that Instagram picture is really weird. I I think it says either Halo on Switch or even Master Chief and Smash. Well, when stuff like this happens, I like to think like there was supposed to be an announcement and this was a scheduled post, but the announcement got delayed. <laughs> yes. So like that's possible because Halo was Ab supposed absolutely. to be out already and uh I think Nintendo was supposed to announce a bunch of stuff that they just never did. Um so I think it's possible that this was like uh, something yeah. like that. Well, you know, can we see who made this? Because it it's fan art. And how long uh, ago did they make it? I mean... Oh, they literally just posted it. It could be like... Um, no, it's it's definitely fan art. They 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 gave oh, credit they to the person. Art. Okay. And it was posted All a right. day ago. So... Uh... Oh, they it looks like they recolored it. Or like you know, did some touch up to it. Oh, they definitely did some touch up to it. Because this looks really bright. Yeah. And this one's a lot darker. Huh. Interesting. I hope they didn't. Weird. I always feel weird when I Slap see companies like, like repost art, but then like uh, color it differently or something. 
It looks like all this guy's stuff is really bright. It might just be an accident. <laughs> it, 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 maybe. <laughs> it is very bright, but that, that stuff is cool. I don't, I don't take Halo posting something like that. I don't take any verified account posting something like this to be just like, oh, it's for fun. Like, you're definitely posting it for a reason. And I think that reason is for Halo and Smash, judging by, <laughs> or no, no, I'm sorry, Halo on the Switch. Hmm. Just because, like, if, if it was just Master Chief chilling with Mario, I could say Smash. But it's every Mario character as a Halo character, which I think indicates more just Halo on Switch. It's a, it's definitely a weird... I mean, companies are getting buddy-buddy with each other on, on social media, like, a lot more now. Like, companies are just... yeah. Being like, hey, look, we're friends now, but uh, it, it's nice this to is see different. That the hostility is done because this is we we were just talking about how Nintendo and Microsoft there's rumors about them doing stuff, and then this happens. So yeah, uh, uh, again, I'm not. It, it's just like how many. It, it it's crazy that Xbox and Nintendo working together is still such big news because I feel like it's happened a lot over the course of the past couple of years well we've been getting like spoon fed a little bit of microsoft and nintendo working together and now we're getting like it, there's potential for something big mm. okay yeah i'm I, i'm with it and i'm excited i think it's going to be really cool no matter what i'm going to read some notifications we got jay phlegm with 20 Please months do. thank you very much we got zaval with nine months and we got louise muta with a brand new Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you. Brand new Twitch Prime? Yeah. I can't believe you used Daddy Bezos' money on Bob. It's so nice. If everyone <laughs> has a little bit of Daddy's money right now, please use that Prime Gaming sub on twitch.tv slash wolf right now. I'm trying to get a hype train started. If we can get a hype train started <laughs> off that, that'd be so cool. Oh, wait, no, I think you're on cooldown right now. You're on cooldown. What does that mean? I don't know what hype train means. I don't know any of that. I don't know what hype train means. I mean, I know what it means, but I don't know how it works exactly. I just know that uh, that means it, a lot of people are subscribing at once. It's when at le minimum three people donate at least 100 bits. So at okay. least a dollar. And it can only happen once every two hours. Oh. oh so, I didn't but know that like part. The, the goal is to get the hype train to level five. Oh. What happens at level five? Nothing. You just get to level five. But if you get to level five, uh, Doesn't Twitch unlock actually emotion pushes your stuff? stream more. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with discoverability is what I'm finding out. Because you get when you're on a hype train, you get a tag that says hype train. And that's so the little gremlin that works in Twitch.tv's basement can push the stream in, in to like, people's recommended uh, channels. It's very interesting. Uh, that was a deep cut joke. Nobody's gonna get. Um, um, uh, hey, Max Sauce, thanks for gifting a sub to Mushroom. Look at that. <laughs> Hype train's working. I. You also get emotes and stuff, don't you? From Hype trains, yes, you do. Yeah, like like it gives emotes to like people yeah. in the chat. By by now though, everyone has earned the emotes that they've added. Mm. So, there's no. No, I thought it gives you. Anymore. I thought it gives you my emotes. It gives you your emotes if you subscribe to you. But the but the hype train has special emotes that you can earn by completing each level. Oh, does it do and modifier emote things like modifiers to emotes that you already have? Like the glasses. Those are for channel points. Those are those are different. Uh... Bob, it's working. It's working. Well, the Squishy Who, going. thank you for gifting a sub to Flash R and train. Let's Crenshaw, go. Choo thank choo. you for gifting a sub to Marthu. Remember, if you're a new subscriber, go to the Discord. Get into the supporter Discord. Yay. Um, Guys, save your money and do it to somebody like Scootish, or I think AJ's streaming right now. Go over there. <laughs> yeah, go over there. Unless you have a tomorrow. Prime subscription, give it to me. There's no reason not to give me a Prime <laughs> subscription. I'll murder you if you don't give me a Prime subscription. Don't, Otherwise, save your money. Wait, what? You could just threaten them with ads. You didn't have to threaten them with murder. No, I'll murder. I'll straight up murder you if you don't give me your your free Prime subscription. How oh, dare you? Oh, God, guys, he's serious. I would subscribe if I were you. So let's move on to this okay. big news. Whoa! A new color was just created by scientists. <laughs> I'm so excited. 
Nintendo unveils a new blue Switch Lite console. Here I'm it is. I'm so pumped. Is it blue, though? Here's the thing. Every time there's a new either Switch color or Joy-Con color, it looks way yeah. different in person than it does in pictures and videos and stuff. Like, when you're seeing it under different lighting conditions and stuff, it looks way different. Um, I have no idea what this looks like i don't i can't picture in my brain what this could possibly look like so here's an interesting thing this got announced while i was at work and i i I was scrolling on my phone and i saw the blue switch and i was super pumped it looked so blue on my phone Mm -hmm. now i'm looking at it right now the thing looks as purple as barney (laughs) uh i i think the truth lies in the middle because that's kind of what happens uh, my phone brightens colors, my computer's a little bit better with darker colors. So I think it's somewhere in the happy middle, just like the uh, little neon colored Joy-Cons so, I have. So I have a scientific answer for you of what I think this color actually is. I'm ready. But before I get into that, the official statement is Nintendo Switch Lite is designed for handheld play, making it easy to bring the wide library of Nintendo Switch games with you and transform any of life's moments into a grand adventure. As a dedicated handheld gaming device, Nintendo Switch Lite has integrated controls and is smaller and lighter than the Nintendo Switch. It's compatible with all of the games in the Nintendo Switch library. I thought this was going to be something about the color, and it's not. <laughs> nope. I'm disappointed about that. Uh, well, they have a tweet, don't they? Oh, here's here we go. We got a Nintendo Life article that says, talking point, is this Switch Lite blue or purple? <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's hard to tell. Oh, wow. When you put it next to a GameCube, like the purple GameCube, it looks blue. But that's because the purple GameCube is clearly purple. Right. I, I, I think to, it's, it's definitely blue. Uh, I wanted to find this tweet. Introducing a fresh new blue color coming, uh... May 21st for $200. That's the MSRP of a regular Switch Lite. The blue Nintendo Switch Lite will release separately on the same day as the hilarious adventure game Metopia. I truly want this thing to be not, like considered not blue because I think it would be really funny if Nintendo got sued for <laughs> lying to the consumer. <laughs> I mean, when you get it, it always looks different than the pictures you see online. So that's possible. They, yeah, but like it's I, always like could it is yellow. Like my switch, like my I like I had a switch light, but I uh, lent it to uh, Kale, um, and it was a yellow switch, but it just wasn't the same yellow they showed me in the pictures. Right. Uh, that being said, blue is my favorite color. I want this blue switch. <laughs> I'm looking at since it says it's all launching this it's launching the same day as Metopia. Um I'm looking at pictures of Metopia to see if blue is like the theme and it doesn't really look like it. It looks like it's purple and turquoise is the Metopia vibe. I I actually think if you click on the like the cover art like right in the middle is the color of the switch. True. No, you're right. You're right about that. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing to a, to release alongside Metopia. I think Metopia is just weird in general that they're making that game again. Uh, but I'm excited about it. I like I like I like blue. I'm a very blue person. So not that not to say I'm sad. I just like the color blue. So so so. A lot of people are saying that looks blue. That looks purple. Obviously, it's di- it, like you it, just said it's before. The dress. It's the dress tweet again. Exactly. But like you said yeah. before, it's different on different screens. Absolutely, um, it is. Uh, and people in the chat are saying it's bluish purple or it's purplish blue. There is a color for that. It's called indigo. <laughs> indigo is defined at the word in. No. The color between blue and violet. It's literally it's it's the it's the spectrum of light that sits between blue and violet. This picture's a little darker. But that's the if it if it's bluish purple, that means it's indigo. And that's what yeah. we have here. I I like indigo. It's yeah, it's cool. wrong, indigo. Indigo that's is the forgotten I, color that I everybody's thought. like doesn't think exists cuz it's not blue and it's not purple. <laughs> 
And it kind of I mean, it's I, kind of I, a useless color because you could be defined as either blue or purple. You don't need it. It's not necessary. It's not a necessary color in the in the light spectrum. Indigo. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. This is like literally is only where, uh... case where I've ever needed to say indigo. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I know one Bobby Pokemon because of the indigo plateau. I never heard of it. I don't know what you're talking about. I never played Pokemon. Silly. Before my life. But no, it's a cool color. I'm I'm into this color. I'm excited. I like it. I'm I'm probably gonna buy it again. I and I hate that I'm gonna buy it, but like. My my switch is dying, and it just oh no! It, it's not it, it's it's a very old switch at this point. It's like a launch switch or something. It's it's the Pikachu and Eevee switch. You, so it's you, like a version one. You and like, the battery's bad. You like uh, playing in bed. I do like playing in bed. So a switch light would be good for you, and then you can take a your uh, you, you could take your a Pikachu and Eevee switch and put it uh, in your dock and leave it there. Yeah, I'll just leave it in my dock. It will it will never leave ever again. However, like this thing uh, can I'm be my travel switch. I'm still not uh comfortable with the way saves transfer and stuff. I still I still think it's kind of a pain in the ass to have multiple switches. Which is why oh, it's so annoying. Which is why mine I literally just got a, I just put it in a case yesterday. It has been sitting mm. in a drawer with all of my controllers scratching up against it for oh, no. months but i haven't i like that color too to be honest with you i like this color a lot i think though my favorite color might be the coral one i think the coral one is the coolest looking the one. coral one's sick also the you gray one kind of cool? looks cool which one the gray one is actually kind of cool the the gray one's cool you know what one never got enough hype in my opinion the pokemon one Oh yeah, the sword and I shield. i forgot like, about that one they just that released the it one. and they were just like oh yeah i don't know Take this Pokemon Switch light, and no one cared. Like that thing looked awesome. No, that one's definitely the coolest looking one. I take it all like, back. Like, why didn't anyone buy that one? Why did we make a big deal out of it? I just googled like, it. It looks so cool. And there's literally only one one picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Yeah, no, that one's sick. Like, that looks awesome. That's one of the best designed switches. Period. Yeah, hundred the, percent. They do. A, they've. They, They've been doing a pretty bad job making special edition switches. Uh, I only Didn't really you know like it's not like Gangbusters. I I only really like the Mario one because uh, it's all red, and this is uh, all yeah. colored too. So and the buns are different. This is cool. I like this a lot. I am just I I. There's only one special edition switch I really want. It's the Dragon Quest Eleven switch. I have been trying to get my grubby, greasy little gamer hands on it for so long, and I can't track it down, and the only place I know where to get it is Japan. And I was, I was gonna I get it. I don't think it released in America, right? It didn't release in America, it only released in Japan. But I've, you know, there are websites to like get it online, and I've been trying to snag one, but I haven't been able to, and I want it so gosh darn bad. Jackson, I'm gonna be real with you. What? This this sucks. <laughs> okay, but like you don't understand <laughs> or have an appreciation for. Like I don't. I don't. What the dock and what the what's on the dock and. I see a sword on the, the shield. Uh, right, but like that's not just any sword and shield though. Poorly photoshopped in this picture. Yeah. Probably. And uh, the Joy Cons kind of cool. The Joy Cons are amazing. That is the only way to get that color blue i believe it or no i'm sorry you can get it if you get the fortnite joy cons but i refuse to go to that level there's some blue on the back there on is the some back blue plate. On the back. oh there is that is pretty cool that's okay that's the first like actual color on the back of the yeah, switch. It's, it, it's the slimes <laughs> right and listen it's just, it's just so cool I want to get it. I was going to get it this summer. I, like, had enough money, like, tucked away for when me and the boys went to Japan. But then, obviously, the world went on fire, and I couldn't go to Japan. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping one day. You definitely could have gotten it there. It just would have been expensive. I, I don't care. I would have. At all the places, I was disappointed when I went to Japan. Uh, really? At, at, well, no, I love Japan. It was fucking awesome. Okay. But 
I was disappointed when I was like retro game shopping because all of the places I went to, most of the stuff was just as expensive as it would have been if you imported it. And a lot of people that are going to tell you, well, that's because you went to uh, uh, Akihabara. And if you went to like, uh, you know, the outskirts of Kyoto, it might have been cheaper. Um, but yeah, the places I went to, uh, and I went to a lot of places, the, the prices were pretty much the I, same as if you, you just bought it on eBay. Yeah. We should go to Japan. Yeah. I want to go yeah. next February if, ne you know, things next, open up. You know what? Okay. Um, let's just pick a range of dates. I don't know. I want to go the whole month. So, so meet me the there. Whole month. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, let's, but like, let's have like a special dinner. We can okay. go with other people, but like, let's have a special dinner, me and you, on a random day in February. I don't know. Um, the fourteenth, I guess, just oh. off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah, just off the top of my head. You're just shooting it. You're just shooting. Just dates I'm just out saying there. numbers, and you're not okay. saying no. Okay. Um. I, I know this really cute um little cafe. Uh, yeah. What's the name of it? Yeah. Where is it exactly? Uh, the Square Enix Cafe. <laughs> it's in Shibuya. That's cute. They have they have Kingdom Hearts themed tea. Where they I give wonder. You a little keyblade to like stir your tea. I wonder what that would be like specifically on that one day in February on the fourteenth. I'm scared. That would be I would an be interesting. Afraid. An interesting time of the year specifically to be at the Square Enix Cafe. <laughs> Two grown men together just in love. <laughs> love? What? What are you talking about? I didn't say it. You, you, you said you No, you said, said it. You said it no, first, and then I, I was repulsed. I remember clearly you said love. I would never. I, 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 I. I don't know what that, would make you imply neither that. Here there. It's neither here nor there. Anyway. Neither here nor there. Anyway, okay, moving sure. on let's here. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's get let's get out of this. Oh, uh, did I say Crenshaw? Yes, I did. Thanks for giving us up. Uh, Mecha Dragon with the forty bits. I hate how Nintendo announced this awesome new color for the Switch Lite a few days after I purchased a new Switch Lite from Best Buy. Well, uh, we don't know if you got the better color yet. <laughs> it's potentially you got the better color because. Uh, we won't know what this color looks like until we see it in person. It and I'm not going to buy it. it. I, I, I'm not buying it. I'm not doing a I'll, video I'll, on it. I'll buy it, Bob. I'll let you borrow it, and you can make a video about it. I, I don't think I want to. About the color, Bob. Just compare it to other things that are purple in your house. It's That's taking a whole video. indigo. It's taking a whole month for it to come out. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why they don't just release colors like... We have it. It's done. It's printed. Go. I don't Mech know why they have to like hype us up for a month. Mecha Dragon with six bits said, "Forgot to say, I got the black one because black on tech is cool." Do you mean gray? Yeah, I, it's I, definitely gray. I'll be honest. The gray actually looks cool in person. I think the gray does look good in person. I think the, all the, the gray with the white the buttons is is really cool. And it's like a, it's I like, like a the cool feel gray of the buttons on the Switch Lite too. The Switch Lite's awesome. I yeah, it's it. it's a good console. I I would just wish it could still play the games on the TV. But I understand that's the, not the point. It it's great. I there's a lot of people who play almost entirely in portable mode. And it sounds like you're one and of those I, people. I, and I understand that. When you're not streaming, uh, of course. I yeah, I don't know. I've I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter on my TV. Hmm. Uh that is a great docked game. It is a great docked game, but I, I don't know. I just feel like the whole point of the Switch is like that it can be portable and a home console, and the the light only being the home console or only being the portable console to me baffles me because like that's not the that wasn't the thesis statement of the Switch. Mm -hmm. They're kind of just like saying, "Hey, remember that thing that we sold you." Here's a Game Boy, the thing that we well, did, and we're playing it safe right now. You know what it was? Yeah, it was because uh, they always have something in the portable market. And yeah. the Switch, and the portable market's always like the slightly cheaper option too. So the Switch kind of took that market. So they needed a hardware that was, that lowered the barrier to entry a little bit and also mm -hmm. kept them 
kept their roots firm in the hardware market. I mean, yeah. the, the the handheld market. Um, All right. Because the DS was was out the window by that point. So uh, yeah. I think that it worked out in that favor. But some people think there also needs to be... Uh, they have A to Switch mirror Pro. that. Yeah, some yeah. people think that because of that, because they have the one console that is just a portable console they also need to have one console that is just a uh you know docked only version yeah. of the switch and i agree with i agree with that actually like i hate that i do I just don't. because i know that my dumbass is gonna have all three <laughs> well rumor the latest nintendo switch firmware update contains bluetooth audio support you know that rumored switch pro everybody's been talking about guess what hot diggity damn might have bluetooth on it Oh, jeez. So I think last week we talked about this. and uh, Oh, because there's the update. There's a 12.0.0 update on the Switch. And Oatmeal Dome did like a little teardown of it and said mm -hmm. basically nothing important. Uh, there's nothing going okay. on, on on the update, which is weird because it's a whole number up. It went from 11 to 12. Usually that's like right. a big deal update. But in this case, right. it wasn't a big deal. Just like Minecraft. Sure. Well, according yeah. to my Nintendo news, they say you may have noticed that the Nintendo Switch has recently received another update, bringing the firmware version up to 12.0.0. And although there wasn't much to shout about, thanks to the extremely brief patch notes, once the update was data mined, it was noted that the update enabled the Switch's dock to be updated. What? Now, thanks to data miner Oatmeal Dome for pointing it out on Twitter, there may be even more to patch. Update 12.0.0 has supposedly added audio support for the system's Bluetooth driver, as you can see in the notes in the tweet below. So he says in a tweet, 12.0.0 has added audio support to the Bluetooth driver. However, I'm not sure if anything is actually using the new support so far. No guarantees it will ever be used either. And then there's all this technical jargon that you can look at on screen right now and pause it if you are into that stuff. There is. Ooh. Good Good luck, everybody. This is good technical stuff. Uh, he's Oatmeal Dome says, I personally don't think Nintendo would add this for no reason. So hopefully this will be used somewhere, especially since Bluetooth audio is a highly requested feature on the Switch. We'll see what happens. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Nintendo works in mysterious ways. I think that's all we need mm -hmm. to read from that. Um, I always hear people talking about Bluetooth audio on the Switch. It is a really too. dumb thing to not have on the Switch. I... I, I agree with you. I For a long time, I was just like, oh, I don't really care that it doesn't have Bluetooth on the Switch. Uh, and But granted, that was back in... It, 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 it's bad future-proofing by not including Bluetooth audio in the Switch because back when, you know, the Switch came out, I was still using wired headphones like, like a degenerate. I... And then I got... <laughs> You're doing it right <laughs> now. <laughs> You're using wired headphones right now. No, but, but like mo Mobley, do you use wired headphones? I do. I use it. Really? I exclusively use wired headphones. That's crazy. Because yeah, I use um, uh, my AirPods for everything now. I love these things. They were in your butt. They were in. They were in my butt. Actually, my mom just got me these um, because mine broke. But she got it so to, so that it says my name on my on my. Uh, it won't focus. But it says scootish on my on my little case. I'll never believe I, you now. I just I just wanted to tell everyone that I love my mom. I love you, mom. She's gonna listen. <laughs> she told me. Um. But yeah, but ever since I switched to Bluetooth headphones, I've always thought like this would be good on the Switch, just so I can like listen and I don't have to unplug and plug in wired headphones. I I I, I get I totally get the appeal for for Bluetooth audio. Um. I feel weird when I'm like on the subway or something and I have my wired headphones in. I feel like I'm like, I feel like I'm like listening to a Walkman or something. I feel like I'm I'm in from yeah. the fucking nineties and everybody else is in like, uh, you know, the future. Um, Actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the reason why I stopped wearing wired headphones completely is cause, uh, I was wearing a wired headphones playing my switch 
and some dude just really angry um like called me a bunch of bad words that I can't say legally and slammed the wire made me drop my switch broke my fucking switch my original launch day switch uh so I had that's why I bought the Pikachu and Eevee switch cuz like I needed a replacement and from that day I just never have used wired headphones publicly again wow I know. I was very that is, scared. New that York is City insane. is scary. That's a thing. Like people talk about how uh, if you're listening to headphones, people will walk over and very quickly yank on them to try to grab your phone or something, whatever is plugged in on the other end. Yeah. L luckily, they didn't account for me to be being the most clumsy and just like <laughs> obnoxiously taking up space person in the world. They did it. And I, I literally said, oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. It just as loud as I could, and everyone turned around, and he just ran away because he was clearly trying to, like, take my things. So, <laughs> I just was like, well, that was weird. And then a nice man told me, he was like, yeah, he was saying a bunch of curse words to you. Like, he was trying to take your stuff. Jesus Christ. And I was like, oh, thank you, sir. He really wanted to play whatever game you were playing. Dude, it was Dragon Quest Eleven. That game just looks so good when you're watching someone Dude, else play it so, from afar on the train. It's so good. Bob, I know, I know you're in a bit right now, but please, this game is no, like one I of the don't, best I don't, games of all time. I don't. It looks like a game that I would not be into at all. Is what it looks like. Probably. <laughs> uh, Mecha Dragon in the chat says, "Bob, didn't you promote Raycon earbuds?" No, I turned them down specifically because I don't like wireless headphones. <laughs> that was the other long-haired Nintendo Switch guy. Also. <laughs> I, I also uh, actually the biggest reason why I turned down Raycon was because I made a tweet like a year ago that said all these people promoting Raycons immediately putting them in their pocket and then picking up their friggin' AirPods like nobody's using Raycons. I remember that tweet. <laughs> Raycons. I... Everybody's using Raycons for Android phones, but most of these people who are promoting Raycons are using AirPods when they're not on oh, camera. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Especially the the people that like do more acting stuff on YouTube. If you're doing acting stuff on YouTube, it's like it it legit is an industry standard thing. You need an iPhone, from what I've been told. Like, I've met with agents and managers. They've said uh, if you don't have an iPhone, you will lose a job because your text bubble will be green instead of blue. I, I could see that. I could see that. And I just think that that's the craziest thing in the world. I got nothing against Raycon. If, if 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 you have an Android phone or or need blue wireless headphones, go nuts. I just I like wired headphones because I don't like having to pair stuff and having all these problems with things that happen every once in a while. It's just so easy. I, I don't have a problem with the wire. The wire never gets caught up in anything. It's like such like an overreach of convenience. I I don't I don't agree with you personally. <laughs> I, I I I know we've gone like down a path that like. That was not the point of what you brought up, but the like wireless headphones just they feel better. It's less cumbersome. Like, don't your doesn't your wired headphones ever get tangled and jangled in all of your things? No. Like in your backpack? No. In you my have backpack? perfect wire management no. wherever I, you go. I wrap them up on my hand and they go in a case every time. You put them in a case. Uh, yeah, I don't have them with me. And then these, I wrap them in my hand and I stuff them over here and they never get caught up in anything. Okay, then, th th listen, this man takes care of his wired headphones. It I takes never two seconds. You just wrap them up in your hand. Dude, it, it takes two seconds. I always wrap them up in my hand. I never put them in a case. These I, I don't put better... in a case. These I do not put in a case. My other headphones that I have in my jacket, they go in a case. Right. Because right, they I'm will saying. get tangled otherwise. That's insane to me. I've never met anyone that does that. I think you're now like a gold standard of like <laughs> order. Order. I am not a clean person. I know you're not. I've been to your home. Rude. Uh, <laughs> if you like wireless so much, why are you wearing wired headphones right now? Well, it's different when I'm like using a. I said publicly, like when I'm. Oh, out what, you about. want you want everybody to like not think you're a weirdo. You want to conform with everybody else is wearing wireless headphones. Is that it? No, because because like when I when I uh, when I when I step out and I and I put these bad boys in <laughs> and I turn on the noise canceling. Oh baby, I'm letting people know how rich I am. 
Right. What's that? Sorry, can't hear the poor. <laughs> it's a, it's 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 a uh, it's it's a it's a it's a flex thing. Actually, right. you you cut it off, but I I make sure that in my stream everyone knows that I have a PS5, for that I am lucky enough. Oh, I can to move be blessed it. Oh, with a PS5. There it is. Do do you see chat? Do you see? Have, audio listeners, I'm pointing to a PS5, I mean, hold on. which you do not have. And if you do, congratulations, Whoops. you are you are a patrician in society. You are not you are not a plebeian. Oh, you can't see it. I got oh, I got no. Series X in the shot though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's same price. Just as good. Just as good. Same price. Just as classy. Just as classy. <laughs> I think uh, I just made a bunch of enemies. Anyway, this all started because we we're talking about Bluetooth audio on the Switch. Now, the Switch already has Bluetooth. So it makes absolutely no sense why there's no Bluetooth audio. I don't really understand how the technology works and why they're... I know I understand that there's different, like, like Bluetooth antennas in devices. Maybe this doesn't have enough to have mm -hmm. controllers and Bluetooth audio at the same time. Um there apparently this update is adding some sort of support for it i also don't know if like i mean android phones have bluetooth the switch yeah. is basically an android tablet i don't really understand if you put i mean i have a switch with android on it i've never tried to use bluetooth audio through it though i don't know if that yeah. would work and if I... that works why wouldn't it work on the switch natively already why didn't nintendo already enable that it's pretty ridiculous i don't have knowledge about bluetooth when i was a kid and people told my dad told me that he was getting something with bluetooth i thought one of his teeth was being removed by the dentist and inserted like a bluetooth like that's what i thought was happening that's what i was pretty sure was just society's like the well, next step they, in society that's where they got blue teeth. that's where they got the name for bluetooth it was originally uh like a like an implant i I, I don't know if you're messing with. Is I'm that, messing is with that you. True? I have no. I have no, That's not that, true. That, that, that's crazy. I almost. I, I I firmly believed you, and it was like, r robots are among us. This is true though. Ericsson, the phone company, worked on the Bluetooth spec, and then Sony bought them at the oh. time. I think so. Sony has uh has a hand in the creation of Bluetooth mm -hmm. and and the and the license. I think of Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh. So the fact that I don't think I don't even think the PlayStation has no. This PlayStation had a weird history with Bluetooth. Like the I, controllers I were think Bluetooth. PlayStation has Bluetooth. I don't know about the audio though. Does that I, Bluetooth audio? Aren't these Bluetooth? I don't think they are. No, they oh. require a dongle, don't they? Oh, they do. You're right. Or I mean, wait, wait. The, I think the dongle is Bluetooth. Yeah, but uh, you need the dongle. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what Bluetooth is really. Like, I don't. It's a I, wireless like, I, uh, language, basically. No, I know it's a wireless language, but like th them doing this, does that enable Bluetooth? Like, I, I, like, I don't know how that works. So, so you can install Bluetooth. So, so hold on. Oh, oh, uh, to my understanding, the PS5 does not have Bluetooth support for audio either, <laughs> which is kind of a bigger deal than Nintendo not having it. Um, you need that adapter, and that's what enables okay. it. Okay. Uh, okay. Which is ridiculous because again, Sony has like a hand in in Bluetooth. Um, anyway, uh, in terms of them enable, it's it's sort of like a firmware update. So they're oh, they're, oh, they're okay. unlocking so that allows it to work. So it, the switch already has Bluetooth. The problem is allowing audio to happen through Bluetooth. The Joy Cons connect through Bluetooth. That's so stupid. Just let audio happen through Bluetooth. Exactly. But that's what I was saying. Okay. Before. Now I, I don't get exactly it. know how like why they couldn't do that in the past. I don't understand why they limited that. I I think that's silly. Uh, Microsoft, on the other hand, Bluetooth up the wazoo. You can do whatever you want. I mean, hey, good for them. I mean, I, let, let's be real. I, the Series think, X is just a mini computer. It's true. I think Bluetooth might be too slow for gaming uh, audio, and that's why people don't like it for gaming audio, but I'm not entirely sure. Mm. I know 
uh, when everything was becoming wireless, my dad got a part of that trend very quickly and bought a thousand wireless peripherals for computers. And he gave me a couple when I was like a little a little boy and I couldn't have a computer of my own or whatever. And I used wireless keyboards, wireless mice and everything. And that was another reason why children made fun of me on the playground because <laughs> uh, they, they called me Laggy Jack because I always was like a little bit slower with my mouse movements because it was like there was a little bit of input lag. So minute. They just heard one person say it on YouTube, but that was enough for them to like call me Laggy Jack for like the rest of my life. <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, I know. I got bullied a lot. You're the one friend who had the bad ping. Yeah, uh, but like I'm like I was like hardwired in. I like had the best ping. I just used wireless stuff. Like there was one time where my mouse died, and everyone just like ridiculed me for it. Like, you don't use wired. Are you even a gamer? I don't like wired mice. It tugs on it. I don't like that. What are you looking at? What? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. So, moving on from Bluetooth. Uh, here you go. The Last of Us remake coming for PS5. They're remaking. I, I, I think we're going to have different takes about this. Uh, they're remaking The Last of Us. Yes, the game I that think, came out at the tail end of the PlayStation Three, for the PlayStation Five, they already I, I, they I, also I, already remastered this game for the yes. PlayStation Four, and it is a phenomenal remaster, by the way. It is it is a great remaster. It's a remaster actually like only a couple months ago, um, uh, got an update for it that even cut the load times down even quicker. It's almost just as fast as the Last of Us Two. Um, this also. Puts Sony morale at an all-time low, or PlayStation morale at an all-time low. Uh, so, before I read the article, I remember seeing this the other day. Um, supposedly, like there were, there was a stu like like some people spun off to make a studio in order to make to develop a PlayStation game, and yeah. Sony was like, "No, you're remaking The Last of Us." Okay, I was told. And from my understanding, the that company was making Days Gone 2. And Sony said I, no. I think you might be correct about that. Okay. Let, let's let's break this down one by one. Let's talk about Days Gone 2 first. Well, well, well do you want me to read if the article okay. so that we're not getting okay. things? Okay, then yeah, yeah, let's Cause do if, that. Because if that's wrong, then we're yeah, going to debate it yeah, for no fair. reason. So let's, read, let, let's have a little corner reading with Bob. Sure, fans will be happy to hear The Last of Us is getting a remake for PlayStation 5, but some developers inside Sony aren't happy with how that came together or what it means for PlayStation's vaunted first-party development going forward, according to a report Friday morning from Bloomberg. The account by Bloomberg's Jason Schreier describes how Sony's visual arts service group of supported oriented a support-oriented studio located in San Diego, took on a PlayStation 5 remake for 2014's The Last of Us with approval, but without much support from above, then saw it handed over to original developer Naughty Dog. Okay. The visual arts service group was then relegated to a support role, as well as assigned to help Naughty Dog complete the delayed The Last of Us Part 2 that launched last summer for a PlayStation 4. As a result, the group's founder left Sony altogether, Bloomberg reports. Polygon has reached out to a PlayStation representative to a PlayStation representative for additional comment. The company declined to com comment for Bloomberg's report, which does not say when the Last of Us PlayStation 5 remake is expected. Friday's report describes a senior leadership at PlayStation obsessed with big hits, critically as well as commercially. For example, Bloomberg says Sony Bend Studios pitch for a sequel to 2019 Days Gone was rejected and part of the studio was told to assist Naughty Dog on two other projects, <laughs> one of them a new Uncharted game. The Oregon studio is now working on a new game of its own, Bloomberg said. So sounds like a separate but related thing was the um, Days Gone situation. You, you know, th there's a lot 
I I actually have been reading a lot about this um because I I was making a making a video about this but I accidentally deleted all the footage of me talking about it. Um, <laughs> oh no! Whoops. Uh, so the the idea the Uncharted idea was originally a remake. We're not clear about what the Uncharted thing was. It could have been a remake of Uncharted One. It could have been an Uncharted prequel. We we don't we don't know. Right. Actually, uh, but I just want to go. A lot of people are talking uh, about how this is bad for Sony in a, in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways is like they're not allowing new ideas, and they're hailing Days Gone Two as like the rejection of a new idea. I don't think that holds water in this case because like. Days Gone 2 is a sequel, so really it's just a, a new idea off of an old idea. And for some reason, IGN like put out a put out this like woefully sad video where it's like, guys, I can't believe we're not getting Days Gone 2 when they themselves shredded Days <laughs> Gone 2. They gave it a six. Like when you get lower than a seven from IGN, something went wrong. And I played Days Gone. It's it's kind of boring. Like, it's not a good game. I don't it, want Days Gone too. I I saw Lucio O'Brien tweet something like, uh, "I gave, I gave uh, Days Gone a, a like a like a not favorable review, but I did like the game, and I think that's like a they could have learned a lot and made something even better for the sequel. So that's why they were like really pushing for." Like, it would have been nice to have had a sequel. There's games that I thought about that with. I thought, like, this is a great first game, and I think the next one will be a lot better. I, um, I thought that about The Order 1886, and then we never heard anything about that again because that game got, like, a 5 out of 10 I, from I actually everybody. like The Order 1886. I, I, think, I think it was, like, a cool gone. graphics demo. I agree. I, I think Days Gone, personally, though, did a really bad job at the game that it was or the and the building the world that it was trying to build and showing off the story that it was trying to show how, how are you familiar with days gone have you played it at all no the reason why i couldn't bring myself to play days gone is because the main character looks like somebody i went to high school with that's fair i understand that he's very generic and you'll all have you know <laughs> the story itself is just like deacon very generic uh the zombie apocalypse starts when he's getting married he loses his wife and he's all sad about uh, losing his wife. And the whole game, you're looking for your wife. Uh, but <laughs> here's, I, 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 this is a big part. This is a big disruption of like ludo narrative dissidence. Do you know? Do you know what that phrase means? Uh, no. It, it's I've when heard it, but there's I don't a know conflict between a video game's narrative. Uh, is interrupt is, is like in contradiction with like the way the gameplay plays like uh in uncharted when nathan drake is like oh my god this temple is so beautiful and then he destroys the entire temple. <laughs> yes yes that's a huge that's a lot of ludo narrative dissonance right right uh and you can experience that in this game when deacon is just being like oh i'm a biker and i miss my wife I don't care about his wife. I'm not Deacon. <laughs> right. I'm Jackson. We have no relation to the character. We are given no reason to care about his wife or this relationship at all. And they do a bad job showing about why we should care about the wife. You know what relationship I do care about? Deacon and his motorcycle. And he treats that thing terribly. I would leave him if I was the motorcycle. <laughs> Maybe that's my fault because I treated the bike terribly. But it, it's it's not it's not a fun game. So, like... I'm not surprised they said no. It, it's like... It's it probably like, didn't uh, sell well is the problem. It, if you're in woodshop class and you, and you like, make a bad... You do a bad job and you're like, teacher, can can I make the, a second version of this? You're just like, no! Because you did a bad job. Go make something yeah. new. Like... Well, in this case, go, Sony's saying, go make something old that we know will sell well. Listen... <laughs> Because the because the developers here, probably show that they're competent, they just need they some are. direction. I I think for a zombie game, the gameplay, 
was okay at times. It was generic and it was a slog, but the gunplay, it was pretty creative about how you could get in and out of situations pretty easily. Uh, it's not, it's not super terrible, but I'd never want to go back to Days Gone too. It, I, I doubt it would be a Watch Dogs two situation. I, that I feel like that's a lot of the reason why Sony is like, no, <laughs> don't you can't play this. I mean, you can't yeah. make a new one of these. Eric in the chat says the fact that Jason Schreier is involved in the article makes me not care about it or believe it one bit. I can't believe that. Why <laughs> is he that he wrong? I don't. Jason Schreier used to work for Kotaku. He was like a big deal, oh. and then he moved oh. to Bloomberg, and okay. now he drops all of these bombshells all the time. I'm I'm familiar. I I think this holds water because it's. I I I believe everything about like what what they're saying is happening. I I I know for a fact they're working on Last of Us Two multiplayer and it's becoming a standalone game. I I I know that like what? they've talked about that. Uh, I've never heard that before in my life. Yeah, they're making. The Last of Us Two multiplayer. I think if you have the Last of Us as Part a Two standalone like, game, like I could buy it on its own. That you sounds can, weird. You can buy it. You can buy just. I don't think it's going to be a full price game, but I think right. you can just play it. I think that they're doing what they're doing with Red Dead Two, because you can just buy the Red Dead Two online mode now. Right. Uh, it's like I, I think like it's Grand just Auto. that. Yeah. No. Red Dead. Red Dead Redemption Two online. Yeah, I think you could also just do Grand Theft Auto. Can you do online. that on for Grand Theft Auto Two now? That's crazy. No, Grand Theft. Well, I know people just, I know people just buy Grand Theft Auto for the online. So yeah, I mean that's true. Bob's googling gaming, oh, Prime gosh. Gaming, Grand Theft Auto Online. Oh, it's like a just showing the benefits. I might have lied. GTA 5 does not have it separate. I lied. I lied to everybody. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Bob tried to be right. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you gave it a good effort, Bobby. It's because he's an I... asshole and will block you just for a simple disagreement. This is about Jason Schreier. Even okay. when you're right or voicing an opposing opinion. It sounds like Eric was uh, blocked by Jason Schreier. <laughs> he, is, he is a little bit abrasive on Twitter. I have seen that happen I... before. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of people being like, we don't need a Last of Us remake because it was only eight years old. And a, a, a lot of people are saying, like, it's Sony not wanting to, like, um, explore new ideas. We're getting a lot of new IPs from Sony this year. Like, in reality, a lot of standalones coming out on uh, only the PS5. Yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say that, yeah. That there like, are. So there are a lot. Yeah, uh, Returnal is another one. And that's from a first Return, party yes, Returnal at the end of the PlayStation month. Studio. Um, but it's just not as big of a deal as when, like, Nintendo makes a new IP, you know? Yeah. And I understand that. Uh, but, you know, remaking The Last of Us, The Last of Us 1 makes sense. When you, like, play The Last of Us 1 and compare it to The Last of Us 2, there's a giant jump like in what the last of us 2 offers than what the last of us 1 offers and also like last of us, last of us 2 just looks so much better i don't i don't think it's that weird that they that they want to like get ready for the uh, upcoming wave of hbo fans I f that the I, tv show will bring i feel like i mean like to me the last the friggin remaster they did is perfectly fine this that should be enough but um, if they're starting development on that now, it'll or within the past year, that would be ready for the ten-year anniversary of The Last of Us, um, yeah. which uh, is really hard for me to say because I'm old. But and I still don't think it's necessary. I still they should just repackage the 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 remaster and call it a day. But I, uh, but I mean, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. I, I think it's a good idea. I have a few caveats, though. Okay. If they remake it and they don't change the story, maybe they add a few new things here and there. That's fine. But as long as the story does not change, I'm okay with it. The minute they change something, that's when I think there will be an issue. Right. If they're trying to retell the story in a different way to get it more in sync with The Last of Us 2— 
or to change the public perception of The Last of Us 2, I'm going to have a big issue. I don't think that they would want to do that. I don't see I, a case where they would do I that. I hope they wouldn't. But also, uh, well, Scoot, d don't play Final Fantasy VII. Dude, come on. Who, I'm, do you see the shirt I'm wearing? Of course I played Final <laughs> Fantasy VII Remake. What the? Vince 11702. Come on. I love Final Fantasy VII Remake. Come on. I think them remaking it for the 10 year anniversary is a good idea as well because it's it's their big 10 years and I truly believe The Last of Us is the first time in gaming. It, it, it's it's a it was a big landmark for gaming in my opinion. It's a big l landmark game. Like when people talk about like the big moments in gaming in the past 10 even 20 years, someone's going to bring up Last of Us because of the way it's acted and presented just like a movie would be, just like a TV show would be. Uh, it it genuinely changed, I think, the way people look at video games so, as actors. So, so, so my, my, well, yes. If you if everybody here wants to see uh, the best behind the scenes I've ever seen for a video game, uh, The Last of Us Grounded is the documentary about making The Last of Us, and it's for free on YouTube, I believe. Uh, yeah. It was for free on Amazon Prime, but I think it's just for free on YouTube now. It's called The Last of Us Grounded. It's fucking awesome. They go between each department and talk about it. And a, a big majority of it is talking about the acting in it. Um, but I think that the medium of video games has things that you can't do in other mediums. And The Last of Us is a perfect example of that because um, the main character does horrible things. And you play as him, and you're forced to do those things even though you don't want to do them. You disagree with what this character's doing, but you they disagreed? make you do it. In the first one, absolutely. Oh, no way! <laughs> I was with it! I needed to protect my little girl! Oh my god. No, but like, that's a perfect... The Last of Us is a perfect example of a game that has very, very little to no ludonarrative dissonance. Because right. everything you do is like commented upon, and it's just like so, do so you like, really think this is the best thing. That's the thing is is that I believe that the character is is going to do this or wants to do this. Yes, I just don't want the character to do it. So I'm like, no, I don't want to do it, and then they like oh, make you do it. That's insane because that's actually how I felt in Last of Us Two, which I know you haven't finished. Right, I still haven't finished it. Um, uh, I really, I really want I, to finish. I also so feel bad. that way about the first Red Dead Redemption. The way the first Red Dead Redemption ended, I think that that is oh, yeah. something that can't be experienced in another medium. Yes, I agree. I actually, uh, in my opinion, think um, either I, I think Red Dead Redemption and GTA V are the last two will be the last two great giant open world games. Like, and, then, I think, and then never again. The world's going to end and we'll never see another great open world video game again. I, I just, <laughs> I, for me, like open world video games are getting like way too big. And I, I've talked about this a lot. There's too much to do. I, too much I mean, to see. I typically don't like open world games. And I think there was a, there were, around the time of GTA V, there was this thing where companies were just trying to make the biggest open world game possible. Yeah. Every remember, company yeah. was trying to top the other company and it just made Fallout uh, 4 and Fallout 76 are great examples of this. Mm -hmm. there, Fallout 4 was like the biggest map anybody's ever seen in a video game. And it's because yeah. there's nothing in the map. It's just, a. Yeah. I mean, I know it's supposed to be a wasteland, but Jesus Christ, why make it so big if you're not going to put anything in it? Yeah, it and and that's my that's my issue with giant open world games is like it they're all just too empty. And I yeah. even felt that uh in Last of Us 2 during that opening bit which I know at least you played the, the day one in Seattle where you're kind of open world a little I'm, bit. I'm like at the end of The Last of Us 2. I just just never finished it. <laughs> where are you in The Last of Us 2? I'm in the second I'm midway through the second part. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's the good part of the game, in my opinion. I feel like I, if I pick it up now, it's going to be harder for me because, you know, the game's harder because it's towards the end. 
<laughs> oh no, I don't think so. I might have to bump the difficulty down a little bit to just to get through it. No, nah, you'll be okay. But uh, I I just love The Last of Us so much. Uh, I I I think that that game ten years, eight years ago did so many things right, and I think it deserves a remake for the PS5. And I think if Naughty, as long as Naughty Dog gets out Last of Us Three in a timely ma- manner, and like the Last of Us One, Two, and Three look uniform together, I think it's okay. I think the remake is warranted and all right. Um, people in the chat said they've never heard about uh, anyone complain about Fallout 4 being empty. That was the big thing when the game came out. You... Well, everyone, <laughs> all the reviews were like, the, it's, there's nothing in the, the open world. It's empty. Yeah, it's very empty. Um, The big deal, the big reason everybody's mad about Sony wanting to remake The Last of Us and like moving studios around and stuff is because they think that this means that there's there's not uh, not room for new IPs. Um, this company was supposedly so apparently a company was working on uh, the Last of Us remake without the blessing of Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo and without the blessing of no with uh, Sony. Um, oh. And what? and and that's what it sounded like. Uh, a support-oriented studio located in San Diego, uh, Sony's Visual Arts Service Group, took on a PlayStation 5 remake for 2014's The Last of Us with, oh, with approval. Oh. Never mind. I take that back. But without much support from above. Oh. So oh, they, okay. So, barely approval. <laughs> then yeah. it was handed over to Naughty Dog. And then they were moved to support, which is their normal, regular job was support, yeah. They were moved back to su- it sounds like this this Last of Us remake was busy work. And because they had nothing else going on and then Sony was like, "Yo, we need support again. The Last of Us was just delayed for the fifth time. You need yeah. to you need to finish it." That's their you know job as a support not- studio is to do stuff yeah. like that. So that seems par for the course. You you, you know, it kind of sounds like they were given The Last of Us they they were given this without much support cuz they were like, "We don't want to put too much money in cuz if if we don't get the HBO show, we can nix it and we'll be fine. But if we get the HBO show, we want this to happen. So we want some like beginning footwork so we can get it out to match the release of the HBO show. That's what it sounds like to me. Well, I think this was before that was all set in stone with the HBO show. Right, exactly. So like that that's what I'm saying. Uh, t- like, to me, to me, it sounds like uh maybe we'll do a Last of Us remake. You guys you guys aren't doing anything right here you go figure something out right and and like but like it it, without giving much support from like sony's own wallet so they can like just kill it and experience no loss in case like because like they clearly like they've been talking with hbo for a while uh and when it got greenlit they were like okay great we need to we need to make sure that this game is baller to get all those (laughs) hungry binge watchers ready to buy our game again and in the case of Days Gone, uh, I mean, the sequel was rejected for, I think, obvious reasons. <laughs> game sucks. It's just and bad. Then they were, and then they were asked to assist uh, uh, Naughty Dog on two other projects. And that's just big AAA Sony relegating studios around. Um, I don't think this means less uh, big deal. I, I don't think this means less new ips uh i i think this means they know what's going to make money and they they they, they have their big white whales or their big whales that are going to make them money and then they can spend money on the creative stuff um there was a quote from one of the execs talking about how they need big ips to make money and that got people upset and i understand that um but it's a big it's a it's a it's one of the top three biggest game companies in the world. Of course, they're going to make AAA games. Gamers, don't worry. We all know they're only making The Last of Us remake, so we they, we can finally get Knack 3. It's going to be even Nick knackier than the last two. Speaking of remasters... Okay. 
Sonic Colors is getting remastered. <laughs> Yay! This is according to Nintendo Everything. This is a rumor. Uh, original, the original article says, Sonic Colors Remastered is rumored to be in the works. That's after a possible mention for the project was found on the website of Ixample, a German dubbing studio. It's listed with key art for Sonic Boom, though we assume that was a mistake. Ew. According to yeah. Ix Sample, the company is involved with localization. The Sonic, the original uh, Sonic Colors did not have a German dub, so Sega may want to include it in a potential remaster. I think that that negates this whole rumor right there. <laughs> we do need what? to, because they're, they're making a German dub for Sonic Colors, and Sonic Colors didn't originally have a German dub. So maybe they're just dubbing original Sonic Colors. Why does it have to be a remake? Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying. We do need to caution this. There's been no official announcement from Sonic Colors. Anyway, update. Sonic Colors Ultimate has been listed by French retailer So Gumly. If the retailer is to be believed, it will be on the Switch and other platforms. The listing does not contain any concrete details, and it's unclear if there's any correlation to Example Discovery. Gotta be honest, I just clicked the link to go to uh, So Gumly. It looks like not a website I would trust for accurate listings. This is French? I can't, this, there's this, nothing this even French. here. Yeah, it, it, it's French. I can't read it, but like just the website itself looks very like I'm going to give your computer a virus. It is taking a long time to load. Well, it's also, we're, we're also trying to reach it from France, Bob. That is true. Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this would be cool. I don't, I don't know if we can say remake. This sounds like it might just be ported to the Switch, and they just wanted some German voice acting. You know what's crazy? We've never gotten. I, I, in my brain, we have never gotten like a like a giant Sonic remaster. Uh, yeah. No, you're right. Well, Sonic Generations, but that's like a weird kind so, of thing. No, nah, like that's that's like a new game. Yeah. Like I know it uses you know, big courses from the franchise. But I don't think we've ever gotten, like, something like a, a remaster like this. And if we got colors, it would make sense because I know everyone loves that game. But I would personally want a remake of Adventure and Adventure 2. Yes. Because those are, like, I think highly considered everyone's, like, some of the best 3D Sonic games. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I think Sonic Adventure 2 is one of the best 3D Sonic games. I think that it came out in a weird window where it immediately became uh, aged. It immediately aged poorly when it came yeah. out. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, because it was on the uh, on the Dreamcast, yeah. and then the Dreamcast immediately failed. Uh, yeah. And it got moved over to the GameCube where many more people played it, but it was that was after Sunshine had already come out. So it, so Sonic Adventure 2 came out before Sunshine and then got ported to the GameCube after Sunshine. So everybody already played Sunshine. I was like, this is 3D platformers. And yeah. it, it, you know, mechanically the way I that looked... it worked, it, 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 it that set the bar for what 3D games were going to be like from then on. And Sega just missed it. They, 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 at the time when Sonic Adventure 2 came out, Everybody was fine with the flaws in it because that was just how gaming was at the time. Yeah. But Nintendo sped things rapidly and uh, they Sega was left in the wake. I, you know, I was when, when when Sonic Adventure Battle 2 came out, I was I was but a stupid little boy. Um, and I loved Sonic Adventure Battle 2. I even got a concussion because I ran like Sonic right off the jungle gym course and hit my head on the ground really hard. Um <laughs> It's, it's a real story. I also broke my arm because I thought I was Superman. I jumped off the jungle gym course. A lot. Of, I don't do well on jungle gym courses is, is the main thread of the I story. I also got... I had many problems with the jungle gym course. So I, I'm with oh, you well, on that. Well, that just makes me plum happy, Bob. Uh, now, I, I love... I loved Sonic for uh, different reasons than I loved Mario. Mario was more about jumping. Uh, Sonic was more about just just running <laughs> and also sonic... wait i gotta i gotta correct myself i already lied uh okay came, sonic adventure 2 battle came out on the gamecube in february of 2002 um 
Sunshine came out in August of 2002. Oh. So a few months after Sonic Adventure 2 Battle came out, that's when it immediately got dated with uh, yeah. Super Mario Sunshine. And I like I wouldn't hold the platforming in a Sonic game to Mario because they are intrinsically different. Like, it's it's not you know what it's not the platforming it's the camera. It's really okay. Uh, so, to I my knowledge, the camera. To be honest with you, though, all oh, the cameras abysmal in Sonic Adventure Two. I to, guess I don't remember. To my knowledge, uh, to my knowledge, uh, Super Mario Sunshine is the first three D. It might be the first 3D game, but I it it's for sure, I think, the first 3D platformer that uses the right stick as a full free-look rotating camera, meaning any direction you can look in it as, as okay. however you want with the right stick. Uh, Sonic Adventure 2, any version you play of that game, the right stick or the or the triggers on the back will move you like it does in, uh, in uh, Super Mario 64. You know, like it, like it, like okay. it's yeah, jittery yeah, yeah. and yeah. doesn't work right. Um, so that's why I think <laughs> that's why I think it, it. Yeah, people don't like that game. That that's probably again just like uh, just nostalgia as a kid. Like I remember, I would stay up all night with my friends at sleepovers, and we would try to um, beat each other in races. We would always argue over who got to be Shadow. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a lot of love and a lot of memory for uh, that specific Sonic game. I unfortunately never got to play Sonic Colors because I'm pre- it, it was a Wii game, right? Wii and DS. Wii and DS. Or 3DS, right? DS, so I, don't, I don't remember. It, it, it was right when, uh, you know, I, I had made the jump from, like, uh, Wii to Xbox. And I was like, I can't, I can't play Sonic. I'm playing Ma- Modern Warfare. I f- I also I played Sonic Colors for two seconds. I think I did it for a video like a long time ago because everybody talked about how it, everybody was talking about how the boost mechanics are the best oh, mechanics for Sonic games, and um, I don't know if I agree with that. But uh, oh no, it, that's, it, that's crazy. From what I played, it was pretty good. Now Will left a note here and said he yes. predicted this oh no no what did he say i want credit for this he tweeted between this new tmnt game the tony hawk coming to switch indiana jones returning to games and the resident evil 2 remake all the games i want are coming out time to will some more games into existence hey sega port sonic colors to current gen systems <laughs> and announce sonic colors too and he he dare post that posted this on mario day Oh my about god. Sonic. What a piece of trash. Will, how dare you? Have respect for the how dead. You knew. How dare you, Will? You knew in but 21 days Nintendo was going to drag Mario's beaten corpse behind the shed and take care of him. Mario's dead now. We're never going to get another Mario game, Will. How dare you? The last article on this you list don't like of. That joke, okay. The last article on this list of articles is Switch shortage should could be coming. Uh, I don't think I want to read this. It's just about how there's like a transistor shortage that, I mean, I think that's what this is. Uh, it's a global shortage of semiconductors, apparently. Yes, that's what it is. Um, I, I don't care. Like, <laughs> a lot of technology is going to have a problem this holiday season, basically. I... I, I th- here here's the thing like also it's also why we don't have a PlayStation like PlayStation you can't just go to the store and get a PlayStation Five which is yeah. ridiculous. Huh, well, that and bots like I know I know people with like walls of PS5s. Yeah, yeah, but you can't you can't get them because they're not okay. supplying enough because of the semiconductor shortage. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it doesn't. Who cares? Uh, Lonos in the chat says semiconductor is very different from transistor chips, Bob. Oh, Lonosis forty seven. Yeah, this is the same kid who, in all capitals, wrote Sonic two thousand six didn't even work when it came out, and you want a remake adventure? Lol. Okay. I don't know how that how that's connected. How you doing today, Lonosis? How you doing today? You feeling Lon- right? Lon- Lon- Lonosis, guys, I'm going to tell you, Sonic twenty two thousand six is like a semiconductor. And Sonic Adventure is like a transistor chip. Get fucked, dude. 
getting wrecked, dude. Damn. Holy shit, dude. Oh, anyway, man. Jackson, do you know what time it is? I have no idea what time it is, but I'm excited because you asked me what time it is. Are you? Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Oh, I love this! Oh, that's it's, so much fun! It's three of the week time, you stupid idiot. Oh, I'm so I'm so stinky stupid. Oh, you can <laughs> smell my rotting brains. This, this is disgusting. This uh, isn't new, but it was tweeted from this guy this week, so I'm going to bring it back into reality. This is from Doth <laughs> the Doth, and it is Big Bird. But he's all blue, and he looks like uh, Dr. Manhattan. And it says, I am tired of this street, these children. <laughs> I love it. That's, That's hilarious. It. What's this one, though? This is uh, uh, Frank from Always Sunny, <laughs> like Dr. Manhattan. It says, I am tired of Earth, these people. I am tired of being caught in the tangle of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Manhattan. Oh, boy. Oh, man. I love it. I love that. All right, it's a good meme. That's a that's a that's a delicious spicy meme. These were good memes. I uh, like them. I realized I was not looking at the Google Doc, but that's the same. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's all the same. You didn't add anything to that, right? What? No, I did not add anything to the Google Doc. Good. I I mainly wanted to talk about um, the Last of Us things. I was curious what you thought, but it, we actually had pretty similar ideas. We did. Jackson, would you look at that? I, I, I was shocked because I watched AJ's video and it kind of like ripped all over my ideas. <laughs> I was like, oh, Bob's going to have the same idea as AJ, I think. Yeah. Now is when we talk to you people here in the chat. Or I, oh, I, I don't got the spiel down like Will does. Uh, we'll talk to you people in the chat, but first we're going to talk to the people who commented on last week's Wolf Den Live in the YouTube comments. So if you're listening to this via podcast form, go over to the YouTube video and you can leave a comment and we'll read it on the following Wolf Den Live. Um, now, if you want to follow along, Jackson, it's I the do. I do want to follow WDL along. info on, uh, on Discord. I think you have access to that? I don't know if I do. Uh, I do not. You didn't give me that time. You silly Billy. Uh, there you go. Now you have access to it. Oh, whoa. Um, Keyholes says, uh, fun fact, I'm a librarian. We get trained in pr uh, preservation slash archiving versus access. Uh, so I think last week we were talking about how um, Nintendo isn't good at... Uh, uh, archiving old games or oh they're whatever garbage i think we determined that they're okay with archiving they're not good with with giving you access to it um yeah yeah anyway that's why we love things like online databases you can preserve the original document and make sure it isn't damaged by further use but still freely ex access the information it's a win-win with games i don't understand why the same thing isn't prioritized you can keep original run copies boxed and archived for museums and private collectors but always 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 have the digital version rom accessible by the public it's not hard nintendo in employ a librarian hint hint it's because of licensing they want to they're being greedy is what it is um they yeah. want to they want to keep the value of the IP. They think that if if they give away the original Mario Brothers uh, on the internet for free, like if they put it in some digital library, uh, yeah. then they can't sell you a $50 game and watch that has it on there. No, 100%. And for honestly, I, th I think that's Nintendo's uh, overcorrection because they totally can and, they, and people would still buy it because like that little game and watch thing, that's just a cool collectible, right? you know? I, I, I don't think anyone that bought that now wouldn't have bought that if Nintendo just didn't source the game on their website. Because let's be honest, you can if I Googled Super Nintendo NES online, I'd find it and well, I could play it. That's the thing. Like it's clearly a collector's item and it's for collectors and they're gonna sell a butt ton yeah. to collectors. And they know that. 
but for whatever reason they think we need to put a game on here that people are gonna like so they shoehorned the original super mario brothers onto a game and watch like yeah they did it because they thought that would sell it more which mm, maybe it okay. would but to me i think whoever was gonna buy that would have bought it if it was just a game and watch anyway yeah no i i, I absolutely uh you, you know what's crazy? This is kind of goes back to our remastered conversation a little bit, uh, and how like Nintendo will like sell you a remastered game even though it's like not that old mm -hmm. or whatever. They, uh, so we, ever, everyone just bought Super Mario 3D World, and I know that came with Bowser's Fury, but like that game only came out. Uh, oh, I'm I googled it. That game came out in 2013. That game's eight years old. That game is as old as Last of Us. Mm -hmm. And, like, why aren't we mad at Nintendo for releasing 3D World, you know? People people are. Oh, okay. Then never mind. People all right, are, all's well in the world. Are okay, as long as, as, long as, <laughs> as long as all gamers are mad and upset about life, then I'm okay with everything. Ivory Mantle says, Wolf Den Podcast is the only podcast I keep with. I keep up with every episode. Thanks, Wolf Bros. Keep it going. Thank you, Ivory. You know, I heard the yet-to-be-determined podcast is also really cool. That is uh, Jiggy's that, podcast. No, nope. No, that that is the yet to be determined podcast. Is E's podcast with me? Oh, I've been on that podcast. <laughs> You've been on that podcast. Jiggy's podcast is Margs with the boys. Oh, I didn't know that. Boys spelt with B O I S because anyone can be a B O I S. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I th wow, I th are, are the cute boys with an I or a Y? I think we had. Uh, I th I think you guys also use it. We also use, use an, an I. I. That is that yeah. is that is a good reason for that. Then. Yeah, it's. it's I'm gonna steal uh, that. You know. The I'll accept hugs. Doofer says, I can't believe how salty Bob got over the E3 news to the point that he was in denial about Nintendo and Microsoft being on board. I still think it's kind of sus. When are you going to realize that despite your personal pref... But I'm sorry. When you I don't want to misquote Doofer here. When are Please you going to realize that despite your, ex your personal experiences, E3 is great for the industry and community until a better alternative comes around? Your thoughts, Jackson. <laughs> as Listen. someone who was with me the last time I went to E3 <laughs> I'm laughing because Bob your life got so fucked <laughs> by E3 and this guy's like you fucking dumbass <laughs> just love E3 <laughs> I, th this guy's like I want my game announcements so what if hundreds of creators got their lives threatened <laughs> This guy's like, I want Bob Wolf to stream E3, and if he fucking doesn't, I'm gonna lose my damn mind. L listen, uh, th that that aside, I think this is hilarious. This is one of my favorite posts. I can't wait. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna say this now, and when I say it, people are gonna go do it ironically, but that's annoying. I can't wait for when, like, eventually I get, like, posts that are like this, like, like I'm dumb posts for whatever because like i I'm, I'm still like i'm like the perfect size right now on twitch where like i average like 30 to 40 people and everyone's just like oh my goodness what are you doing over there <laughs> you, you adorable human being i don't know you, i didn't know you watched jackson too and everyone's just friends and everyone gets along well uh but i i am excited for when i get these like crazies that think like if your opinion, not my opinion. Your opinion, bad. So, 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 so uh, here, here's the thing. I think that is just a testament to the great community you have made. And I'm not yeah, just oh, blowing. 100%. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I, I think that this is a YouTube comment, <laughs> and on YouTube, you're always gonna get stuff like that. Hundred percent. Um, E3 though, let, and let me be clear about this on E3. I had never been to a convention in my life until the year 2019 when I went to uh, New York oh. for the first time. Oh, okay. or New was York it 20? It might have been 2018. I I don't Com recall. Comic Con was before E3, so so uh, the Comic Con 2018 was before E3 2019. So it was then, probably then 2018. I think it was Comic Con. 
Uh, right. Yeah, I think it was 2018, excuse me. Um, I remember I was still in school, but someone was – I saw – or no, I wasn't in school. I had a job, but I saw a ping on my phone because I had push notifications from Kingdom Hearts because Kingdom Hearts was coming out for the first time ever. And I made sure that I was going to buy every single – or I was going to play the game at Comic-Con. So I, I quit – I literally quit my job to go to Comic-Con. And I was blown away. I, I fell in love with conventions. I loved every moment of that convention. I loved the dramaturgy, which is like bringing the creator into the world of the game. And I'm going to let you welcome all your ratings, Bob, because <laughs> I see you looking over, and I understand. Like, I mean, I'm looking you at you. Go. I'm looking at you. I'm, no, I'm looking I, at you. I, I know, but I've seen the eye dart, and I'm, I'm, I'm darting because there's a lot I, of I see your eyes darting. My Boy, eyes, thank my you for the raid. Dart, your eyes dart. We, we dart. We're dark. Thank you for the, You're more of a Twitch streamer than I am, so you 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 know these things. Wood, thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. How was how was Wood's podcast? Everybody, did you enjoy it? Wood scheduled this podcast for the exact same time that we have this podcast. I just want you to know. What do you I think would. about that, Jackson? Uh, Wood, um, you're in one of my YouTube videos when you're talking to Brady. Uh, when Brady killed me with lava. And everyone was like, this was what? faked. And I was, and I reached out for you to uh, uh, support me and be like, no, this wasn't fake. And he just, Brady just murdered me in cold blood. And, and you, you didn't answer the call to I have, I have defend no idea me. That, about. Yeah. I, uh, I, you should have seen my last stream. I had a lot of technical issues in my last stream. I don't want oh, to really? jinx today's stream though. Yeah. I kept, kept disconnecting and stuff. Well, not oh, no. no, my computer. I had to restart my computer at one point because my Elgato was messed up. Then my computer crashed when I plugged something into it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, tell Wood I DM'd him a video, and it's cute because my dog's in it. Oh, or my roommate's so dog's in it. Fun. Uh, to but watch the back, to, back to my point. I, that, that's for spawned... the new people here, we're yeah. shitting all over E3 right now. Continue. Shitting all over E3. Continue, Jack. I'm getting my point. Because I went to New York Comic Con, I met uh, E, one of our friends, uh, and because of E, I got to go to PAX East. You PAX met him West. at Comic Con. I I met him at the New York. Uh, I I met him at the uh, Nintendo New York thing. Uh, Nintendo Power Championship thing. Okay. I I met him at that. That was the first time we like interacted with one another, but through Comic Con and just being at the, in the same place we like formed more of a friendship and he was like here like i need you to help me with like this this and this and i happily did because i i just love having a camera on me which <laughs> sounds incredibly vain but i went to school for acting and it's what i know how to do it's what i enjoy doing it's it's what i love to do uh and i loved going to every convention every convention was great Except for E3. <laughs> E3 is probably one of the worst events I've ever been to. Yeah, the spectacle's there. It's kind of like Disney. It's like Disney World, but everyone's telling you, oh, you can't go do the fun stuff. <laughs> it's true. They, I, I, it, it, it's, like, it's like Disney World, except they planned it the day before. It, it's Disney they World, it up but they one only day let you prior. ride one ride, and the ride is it's a small world. <laughs> Because you got to play like three games. So for years, I've been trashing on E3 for how poorly it's been set up. Uh, yeah. This, I mean, the last two years now, I've been trashing on E3 because they doxed everybody and it was a terrible nightmare for everybody who went. So uh, fuck them. I didn't get doxed and I was excited about that. Yeah, fuck you too. Not that anyone would care. <laughs> <laughs> I I dox myself like every night. I I dox myself the other day. Oh yeah, yeah. Where do you live exactly? Fine. What? Where do you live exactly? Oh, uh, I I I, I told you right up your ass. Oh shh, that was good. Oh, I got gotcha. you. 
On last week's Wolf Den Live, we also have Chad Dominique, who says, as one of as one that prefers to have physical copies of games, I'm upset that companies aren't doing more to keep their games preserved and accessible, but it absolutely pains me to see somewhat recent Switch titles going to uh, going for absurd amounts online. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and AI the Somn Somnoid f files are Somnium. two are two examples going for a hundred plus hundred minus for, for just one for just the cartridge Around and 100. for uh, and 150 plus for a sealed in box uh these oh no that's complete inbox you I'm know sorry. the abbreviation cib but you don't know the around abbreviation i got it wrong it's complete inbox uh <laughs> these games are only wait Oh, I didn't, it didn't look like it tilted to me. These games are only a few years old, and yet the supply of them is completely dried up, which baffles, which is baffling to me. Um, what? I'll be honest. I I read that out loud and retained none of the information. It is not I, your I fault. I have zero idea what he's talking about. It's not his fault. I'm completely inept. It's the end of the podcast. I'm completely... Uh, uh, my brain I, doesn't work anymore. Okay. So... So he's upset that there's rare games that are that are expensive to, to obtain right now for, for, for modern consoles, that that exists. Okay. And that stuff's existed since okay. video games started, you know? Oh, so I actually did just Google Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and yeah, it is going for about a hundred dollars uh i these are these are good games i i know everyone just came from uh wolf's channel and uh, uh um, wood wood wood's channel and wood has a video about how bad xenoblade chronicles 2 is <laughs> but it is a really good game uh it, it's probably one of the best uh jrpgs in history uh and Xenoblade Chronic, the original is also just as good, if not better. Uh, that being said, yeah, like, it, that game was a launch game, though. So, like, it, if you missed your chance to buy it, that's just how physical goes. Like, I don't it, it, know many people running to go buy AI the Somnium files. Yeah, yeah that game is $60 digitally, so... Yeah. Um, if you can't like, there's always going to be a cap on physical media. Like, like yeah. there's going to be rare ones, especially because because they have to meet a demand. And if there's no initial demand for a game like AI, the Somnium Files, then they're not going to make a lot. And then sometimes a year might go by, and then all of a sudden everybody wants AI, the Somnium Files, physically because some boom happens. Maybe they make a movie, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden there's demand for the game, but they stopped making the game, or maybe the company went under, or whatever. So there's always going to be um, games that uh, that are expensive on the aftermarket, um, but in this case, it's up digital. If you want to play it, you can get it this way. It 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 sucks. I, I know a lot of people don't want digital, but this it's available here's a fun fact though uh living in new york does spoil me because if i wanted to right now i could go to nintendo new york oh i would have to go tomorrow i tomorrow i could go to nintendo new york and i could buy the collector's edition of xenoblade chronicles 2 for like 60 dollars. they still have it uh living near like like going to stores is always your best bet looking for like complete inbox games don't look online because if you look online you're going to find the scalpers and they're going to try to sell you an arm and a leg you can even still get uh that fire emblem game that they said they're not selling anymore at the nintendo new york store uh you wait you can you said you can still get it you can still get it because they they sold the collector's edition you can still you can buy it at nintendo new oh, york. that that just means they haven't sold out of them yet <laughs> right no i know you will but not you be able to get, get that in a few weeks Okay, I'm sure. I'm sure, but like you can still get it. You still that, get Xenoblade Chronicles I mean, too. Like there are there know? are cases where Nintendo has been very. I, I'm not trying to trying to defend Nintendo. I think Nintendo has been bad at, especially recently. They've been pretty bad at. They've been bad at, uh, like you know, keep 
making games accessible. We talked about this all last week. But in some case, in cases like this, I think that there's, you know, there's always going to be fringe cases like this. Yeah. Uh, I want to bring up Lonosis again. He's being a stupid idiot again in the chat. He says, isn't E3 beneficial for the majority of gamers, though? We get all the, the major announcements. You could also get all of those major announcements from the companies you know, you themselves, know what? like Nintendo does hey. every month. Hey, you know what? Lonosis, honestly, he's getting to me. <laughs> getting me right here. I, I think I... I think Linosis and I have become soul brothers. Mm. Uh, I get what he's saying, Bob. So you feel it at the, at your heart. You're you're having a connection I, with Linosis. I'm ha I'm I'm connecting to Linosis. I think it is absolutely insane that you need Twitter to get all your game announcements. That's pee pee poo poo. It's it's terrible. I agree with you, Linosis. That logic is awful. I don't want to use the stupid bird app. They yell at people and are very mean. So, yes, Linosis, I agree with you. Like, it, like, Linosis, you're, you're literally proving your point wrong, though. You could just watch the Twitch stream from home when, where they announce everything. You don't need E3 to have the game announcements. That, that, Nintendo does game announcements all year. That's what makes it so frustrating for me, is that you, Linosis, are getting gaming news from me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I go to E3 to then funnel back gaming news to you. We don't need E3. The company like Nintendo or somebody could just tell me and then I'll tell you. Or if you have a Twitter, Nintendo could just tell you directly. Or if you follow Nintendo on Twitch or on YouTube, they can just tell you directly. E3 is a useless middleman. E E3 has caused some of the biggest gaming debacles, hands down. Like, I, I, I purely believe the connect would have died if it wasn't for E3. E E3 needs uh, game companies and content creators. And game companies and content creators do not need E3. They yes. could just cut the middleman out completely. I, I understand. Back in the day, I understood why E3 was around. Because it was like an expo and like the internet yeah. wasn't really a thing still. Now, because of how cool like all these events are, E3 was like, oh, we can invite the public and make some more money. But the problem is, is they still structure it as a trade show, right? not a convention. Th and there, there was a necessary middleman for a long time because yeah. you wanted press to play all the games and then report on it. And they still do stuff like that. Uh, like they have... Uh, yeah. They, like, like game companies will have press come in for a week to try out a new game and then go report on it. Um, these days, information travels at the speed of light. So you can, oh, yeah. you can just show the whole world your game however you want to do it. You don't need the press to, to filter the information. No, it's, it's, ab it's absolutely insane. Like, I, I really thought E3... Like, E3 was a bucket list thing for me. I wasted a spot on my bucket list by going to E3. <laughs> like, it's, it's just like... It's, it's so, th there was a lot of, there, I, 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 don't get me wrong, I love spectacle, that, like, that's a big thing about why I love conventions is because of the spectacle, but the conventions all have substance. There is no substance at E3, it's just a lot of garbage, at least that's what, what's available to the public, and a lot of, uh, news outlets like it's a just, lot of people don't even get to see the cool stuff it's just set up poorly for what they want to do uh i think yeah co conversely pax is set up wonderfully for how they want to do the convention and a lot I, of game companies have games for you to play that are brand new unreleased at pax and it's great yeah so Bob, I, honestly i really think you would like uh what what i said pax west was what i dreamed pa uh e3 to be I think I, you would really love PAX West. I would love to go to PAX West. Bob, let's go to PAX West if it happens. Alex Grote from last week said, Hey, Bob, I realize you just posted a game review video on your channel, but have you ever thought about doing your take on the best 2D side scrolls? Did I do a game review? I have... Did you? I had... I had with Gun Vault a game I'd never have found without you and was wondering what other hidden gems you have. Let's say a best of 2D Mario. I actually have best, I have a, 
like I have a list of video ideas and one of them is 2D platformers. I just don't think oh, there's a lot of great for you. I would love to do that. I just honestly just don't think there's a lot of uh, demand for a video like that. You'd be surprised. <laughs> me uh, me doing a video on on ga specifically games uh, is rough because, you know, people expect like tech from me. Hardware. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 I should say more YouTube expects that. So, yeah. You know, I, I I do think, however, though, uh, top 10 lists are kind of different because everyone kind of wants to know where your top 10 is and if you're right or if you're wrong. Uh, like, <laughs> I, I would post those on TikTok a lot, and they would always do well. Or I posted, like, the games that came out, like, since Cyberpunk was announced in 2012. I would list all the series. People like lists. So if you came up with like a top 10 best 2D side scrollers on Switch, I think people would really like and enjoy that because like they want to they want like a listicle format to like look at and be like, "Oh, Bob's Bob's right." Or they might be like, "Wow, unsubscribe. I'm never watching again. His ideas are trash." Right. I I understand. Yeah. But I don't think your ideas are trash. I actually Every game you have like talked about and recommended, I've overly enjoyed. Wow, thank you. I think your ideas are trash, but I, I thank you. <laughs> anyway, now we're in the chat, guys. We'll take yeah. a couple from the chat and then we'll and get our, out of here. And our feelings aren't hurt at all. <laughs> we've agreed most of this podcast bit. I think the whole podcast, we've basically been in agreement over everything. I, 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 I think the only thing we disagree about is would be JRPGs and gaming. Right. I, I just, uh, you know, I understand the appeal. I just don't. It's just not for me. You just don't have time. Or patience. I think it's more a patience thing. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's becoming more of like, like just from what I've seen in JRPGs, they're becoming more like uh, action-y and high, fast-paced. So uh, your statement doesn't hold water, Bob. Small Dog Mom says, you guys are handsome. Small Dog Mom, thank you. That actually made me smile. Thank you. Uh, Edward says, Ask Awada, Words of Wisdom from Satoru Awada book is out now. And a lovely read. Will you do a video on it? I will not do a video on it because I don't think it would do well. Uh, I would like to read it. I don't know. Last time I read a book, though. I haven't read a book in a long time. I got, I got too much of the old ADHD. I don't know if I actually do, but I feel like I definitely do. Making up for Bob's abuse? Excuse me? What happened? Wait, what? Who's abusing who? who? You're abusing what? me right now. I'm C I'm Creative concerned. Swish says, Bob, you was asking what the best was in your last... Oh, I lost it. In your last vid, it was the one in Wolfden Live first Animal Crossing stream. I Oh, you're talking I, about the best I, I, ad. I, wait, what? I think you he, he's saying you were asking what the what the best ad was. Like the best ad that I've done. Oh. And the best ad oh, that oh, I've done oh. in his eyes is the pizza ad, the screaming Sicilian pizza ad that was in the Animal Crossing Twitch stream. Oh, okay. Okay. Meta Sanchez says, what are you two going to finish tag teaming Demon Souls? Never. I rage quit <laughs> out of that real hard. I liked it. That I'd was, uh, you can watch our saga of playing Demon Souls together on youtube.com slash Wolfden Clips. I'm, I'm definitely fine leaving it where I left it, though, to be I honest. Am, I am also. That being said, it, it like, it going back and like playing um i, I i've been playing uh, dark souls on my own demon souls this demon souls is the easiest souls game i've ever played i i believe it yeah uh go fish goldfish says scoot do you use joycon or alternative when you playing handheld i just he's a simple I do, man i just do this cuz this is what this is what it is. is that Why the would floor? I use a 
Why is would I the, use a controller? Is that the Fortnite Joy-Con? No, it's just the blue and yellow. Yeah. I like Salt. blue and I like yellow. Salts upon wounds. Bob, if you're going to do a top 10 side scrolls, please finish a game for once <laughs> or play them for more than a couple of hours. Uh, no. Thank you, though. You finished a couple games. I finished a lot you of side scrolls. Shadow. Yeah, I finished Cyber Shadow. I finished Celeste. I finished Super Meat Boy Forever. I finished the original Super Meat Boy. I finished. Uh, You've... I mean, I actually, I don't think I ever finished Mario Maker. As someone who, but I played two hundred hours of Mario Maker. I, I I finished enough side scrollers to put make a list out of them. Thank you very much. As someone who's like <laughs> watched your videos or and watched your Twitch streams for a while, you've been getting way better at actually finishing games. So thank you. Kudos to you. I, I'm old enough and experienced enough in video games where I can play a game for two seconds and decide whether or not I'm going to like the game. The only game that has ever changed my opinion after upon completion is Bioshock Infinite. I thought it was a generic shooter the whole time I was playing it until the last like 20 minutes of the game. And then I was like, this okay. game's incredible. All right. That's fair. And it was a narrative reason why it, why it uh, changed my opinion on it. So, oh, of course. Every other vi video game, I've played for two seconds and been like, I got the gist of, of, of it. There's yeah, games that have gotten a... better and better as I played them. But, you know, for the most part, I could tell if a game is not great or average if, within, you know, a few minutes. I thought Bioshock Infinite. I, th I think uh, Bioshock Infinite is one of the best games ever. Uh, I think it is very good. I think it's another example of a of a of a a game of a story that can only of I think it's the only example of something that really utilizes the gaming medium. It can only be done in the gaming medium. Really? I don't I don't know I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> like I like I like I, I like I feel like that twist has happened before. Like Yeah. In, no, in you're movies right. and medium. Yeah, no you're I, absolutely I love right. It. It's like it's a, a sixth good sense it's type enjoyable. thing. It's I, it. It, I take it all back. <laughs> um hey e's here hello e hi e e tried to shoehorn it he was jealous that you were on this podcast he was trying to shoehorn his way in here oh no e i miss you he's gonna be on the podcast eventually i um, gave you little kissies do you plan Those on playing resident evil 8 i really do want to I'm oh, amazed. I too. I'm amazed at what the Resident Evil engine can do on the Switch with Monster Hunter Rise. Oh, dude, it looks so good! It looks amazing. I'm so excited for Resident Evil 8. I think that game's gonna be awesome. Yo, Bob, do you still use that modded multi shine controller? Yes, actually, uh, I it's the C stick. The the rubbers, you know, getting messed up on it, uh, and I bought a new C stick to put in there. I haven't done it yet. I have to fix AJ's Pro Controller that is also for Multishine, so I might do a stream where I fix both of those. Uh, now I'm the modern owner. I'm really, I'm really uh, taken to the name. The modern Dude, did, wolf. Den. Did I tell you um, what happened with your video and my dad? What? When you, so my my dad, uh, he tries to understand what I do on Twitch and twi the Twitch verse, but he doesn't really care he has his own thing going on my mom understands everything but the minute my dad saw those little game boy cartridges of tenet on wired he sent me the article with your video tagged in it i'm like yeah dad that's my that's my friend bob and he was like oh dude no way you know but you know him that's so cool that's awesome it just made me giggle that like <laughs> like he watched your entire video no fucking idea that i knew you that is awesome it's it's just funny. Uh oh, you guys are having a little chat in the com in the in the comments. I didn't, I didn't see all this. Uh, I mean, you just skipped over his question, and I don't want to go down a long path of why I like Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, I understand. Uh, it it's very confusing. You're you don't care. I definitely don't. You're right about that. <laughs> Listen, I I love Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, if you guys like. Uh, long-winded story games like that. I play a lot of them on my channel, and I finish most of them. Uh, <laughs> unlike Bob. Uh, 
So I like go to the Twitch. idea you, scootish. you put on Twitter the other day that you might be the you might start just trying to complete games in one sitting, and I think that's a yes. great idea. I fucking hate that it's a good idea. How because much I love sleep. How much have you played the original Mario Brothers? The original Mario Brothers? Yeah. Uh I I mean I I uh I got good enough to uh play the game, you know, pretty quickly and win. Uh I've lost that. Okay. I used to be very good at the original Mario uh, Brothers. Uh, for some I, reason I like... am however very good at Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. In fact, I was you the are. first person ever to complete Bowser's Fury. There's internet proof of it. You were the first speedrunner of Bowser's Fury. I was Fury. the first speedrunner of Bowser's Fury. Yes, I was the yes. fastest person in the world. Yes. Some would say I still hold that title because I was technically the fastest person to do it first. That so. is true. You were the fastest person to complete, on record, the fastest person to complete on, Bowser's Fury. On record, Fury. yes. So I, I, I do maintain and hold that... Uh, title and i champion it that was a nightmare that was a nightmare stream <laughs> that was really cool because, that you were able to do that i mean it, it, it was fun and i liked the idea but and i think it would have gotten more traction but twitch broke and i don't know if you know about this the the first day the categories got confused yes and it i was streaming to no category so I, I was that. not discoverable. I think they for... made the category and then deleted it. The, yes. Yeah. For, uh, so, so for like two hours or four hours of my eight-hour stream, I was streaming in no category. And I was so upset because I'm like, that's I, – I, I've been what I've been trying to do a lot is um, think about what stream – like put a thesis statement to like each stream. Like, why am I streaming this instead of the Ludwig just... thing? It's the Ludwig thing, right? Yeah. But like, it it holds a lot of water. It does. Like, because like you never hand in a paper that's just like you throw together. Like you have an idea, and you're doing what you're doing. So if I went live with the intention, how I became the fastest speedrunner for Bowser's Fury, and I'm not a speedrunner, then that's a great video. You're going to click that. And I got featured in like some speedrunners <laughs> reaction video to Bowser's Fury. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I I cried laughing. <laughs> There's no reason. It took you like 10 hours. <laughs> it took me 6 hours and 30 minutes. Oh, okay. And that is a pretty fast playthrough. That is actually very fast. For for that, the that first, pre- you have to figure everything out yourself. There's no guides or anything at that point. Ex- exactly, but like even like on how long to beat, I think a rushed playthrough is like seven hours. So mm-hmm. I did it thirty minutes faster than the rushed playthrough. So I'm like, I'm doing something right. You're right. You're right. I there's some uh, shines I never would have been able to find without oh, yeah. a guide or something. No, I I remember you called me, and the minute I saw the Coliseum, I knew exactly which shine you were uh, lost on because they're fucking assholes with where they hide those goddamn coins. Um, what was I gonna say? What were we talking about? Oh yeah, I see. I see like Ludwig and uh, and uh, Ms. Kiff. They they've been they were doing something where they were trying to play the original Super Mario Brothers, and it made it. It made me feel good about myself. That's for sure. I'll say that much. I I, I will say when Ludwig did it. They speed run Mario 64 and they're really good at it. So I don't know why they're so bad at the original. But they they did it at, they they were in bad positions in their life. Because I I actually watch both streamers now. Um, Ludwig I've been watching since October. I've only recently started bringing Ms. Kiff into my fold. I wasn't a huge fan of him, but I'm beginning to appreciate Ms. Kiff a bit more. Uh, Ms. Kiff was doing a reverse subathon. Yes. And I don't know if you've ever looked in Ms. Kiff's chat. I know that chat it's is, toxic as hell, yeah. It's garbage. So they're they're trying to piss him off. So we got pissed off. And obviously, like he was just like, I'm done. Dude, it took him like five and, hours. <laughs> right. And, and it was the first game that he did in this in this reverse subathon. It was the first game. 
he I mean he's just he starts the stream angry cuz he knows the chat is going to make him angry. Right. And Ludwig has been live was live for about like 20 18 days or something. Mm -hmm. And his chat around that became either hashtag free Ludwig, meaning like end the sub subathon or hashtag uh free the Oilers because Ludwig put on a 100 sub gift cap meaning you can't give more than 100 subs right and people are like we want we want to we want to give more than 100 subs because we want to ruin your life and that you know was mentally exhausting and he was like angry about that because <laughs> his friends were coming in in the stream and you know laughing at him and even his manager uh slime who like lives with him was like I was very disappointed with you and frustrated at you that you couldn't play Mario better. Yeah, he was like, yeah, because you were pissing me off and like everyone was pissing me off. He, like, they, he again, they're sleep. they're great at Mario sixty four. Yeah, he's good. At, he's good at original Mario too, but like you you know he hasn't slept really. Yeah, I know that. Uh, he like hasn't. He's his life has sucked for a month. <laughs> Yeah, so Ludwig's doing his. He's he's is he done yet? Is he finished his subathon? It's he, been a month that he's he been streaming. He will be done. He will be done in one hour and thirty minutes. Wow. The these the subathon ends no matter what at nine p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Good for him. And and and, he, and today he reached the top, oh, the the most amount of subs of all time on Twitch. He is truly uh like an inspiration to me. Like I I think he is so talented and smart with how he thinks about content and uh jokes and just doing stuff he he's he's awesome in my opinion he's a really great guy he see, he seems like a really great guy like he made he made a video talking about how much money he's made i don't know any other creator that would do that yeah he gives, like, he's given a lot of it away he, yeah he, and he's given so much of it away he's like keeping it a buck with everyone like it I, I think he's it's awesome. I, I have all the respect in the world for that guy. Lonosis says, too bad he cheated on his ex. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Why are you so negative all the time? Lonosis? What's wrong with you? <laughs> are you okay? Are you all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, also, how, how long do you think it would take for you to finish the original Super Mario Brothers? How long? If you did it on stream. Oh, God. Um... I don't know. Maybe like I th I would say like three to four hours. What about Mario three? I've never played Mario three. All right, fifty gifted, beat Mario three in five hours, but you lose ten gifted every hour it takes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the deal. Put a date on it. Put a date on I'm it. I'm down. I'm down. I'll I'll, 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 I'm down. That that's an put a awesome date on idea. it now because uh, put a podcast date on it listener, now. Podcast listeners are gonna want to hear it. Okay, They're gonna I see it. I have um honestly, I I'm I'm a busy bee. You're this All right. scootish is twitter.com slash scootish ninety nine. He'll update you on it. <laughs> I have a calendar. I have a calendar right now of uh, commitments that I need to I don't, do. I don't have that. I I can't. I, I'm I'm just I'm just a mess. I'm trying. I'm trying to do um uh re get into like filmed content, and I, I need idea. to make like a little schedule of like what I'm doing when because I my brain is poopy and I I I work better at just sitting in front of a camera and trying to make Bob laugh for two hours. <laughs> I do a pretty good job. Jackson, you did tonight. Thank you very thank much for you. being here. I appreciate you coming on the show. Bob, thank you for having me. Like, really, it is such an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, do you want to raid anybody? Uh, let me see. We might have someone. I, I might. Uh, where did they go offline? <laughs> oh, I'm mad. Johnny, you big bubble butted bitch. 
Uh, nice ass, which is why I call him a big bubble butted bitch. Anyway, uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Wait, uh, if you're wait. listening to the podcast, make sure you go to youtube.com slash Wolfden podcast and leave a comment that we might read in the next episode of the Wolfden podcast. Um, I have someone to raid. Who would you like it to be? May, may we raid Juggy 11. Yeah. I have okay, him right great. Here. Um, okay, cool. What else do I have to say? What's the rest of the spiel that Will does? Uh, anyway, I love you. Uh, it's on every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. That's where we do it. You can talk to us live in the chat. Uh, I will be on. I might be on tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, on twitch.tv no slash Wolfden. No so, way! What are you dude? doing? I don't know yet. Uh, I'm making a video. Oh, my God! I'm making a video on this, and it is sick. Oh! The 8 bit do fight stick mod. I finally did it. Maybe I'll play some games with it tomorrow. Um, I'm so excited. I'll also be on on Thursday because uh, I'm always on on Thursdays. Oh, cool. What are you going to do on Thursday? Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, have a French stroke. Fries. I'm going to have a stroke while, while I'm trying to think of what to cool. do. How about that? Can I, can I, can I, uh, can I, can I? I, I think I've been very good. Can I before we go? Can I speak to the chat real quick? All right, make it quick. Okay, great. It's we bit we're like a half an hour over. Chat. Time. Let's have a talk real quick about Twitch. This better be scooted. this better be copyright and why free. Why you go follow? I was moving down the wrong thing. There we go. <laughs> Guys, Scootish. He's good looking. He's funny. He's personable, and he loves one thing more than anything: community. So come to twitch.tv slash scootish for the best little community. Because remember, if you follow and become a scooty, that means you're a cutie. I hope to see you there when I'm live there tomorrow. When I'm doing a $20 marbles tournament. That was came out bad wow. language. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a $20 marbles tournament where you can win 20 whole dollars. That's right. 20 whole dollars. That's pretty poggers. If you <laughs> ask me, chat. I'm a zoomer like you kids. Thanks, guys. Scootish out. Jackson's stream is a good time. Uh, uh, all right. If, you, if you're here in the chat, go say hi to Jiggy. If you're not, I'll see you on the next Wolf Den podcast. Also say hi to Jackson on twitch.tv slash scooters or twitter.com slash scooters99. Again, thank, thank you for being here. Say hi to Jiggy. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.